Okay, so. Hello. Wanna, hello, hello again. Danny's eating uh, <laughs> yogurt pretzels. Cut I read too. that. I read somewhere, like, years ago that, you know, like, those yogurt granola bars and stuff and those yogurt pretzels, they're one of the worst things you can eat. Why? Because they're just fat. They are literally, like, just fat. It, it is a salty uh, <laughs> carb covered in fat. That's what it is. Uh, I like to use them. They look like jism. Look, they're covered in salty jism. <laughs> Good God. Okay. So this is One Couch Podcast. This is our second official episode. Yep. We're, we're uploading the first <laughs> as we speak. We're... <laughs> We're already one more from before. So this is episode two. This is Django and Django. Yeah, I like that name too. Uh-huh. I didn't want to change it. And I, I picked this. This is we're gonna talk about Django from nineteen sixty six and Django Unchained. And I have them. Does does Django from nineteen sixty six have an actual like subtitle or is it just referred no, to as Django, Django from nineteen sixty six? All the rip off sequels. Yeah, they are all like, have subtitles. Django like, live to die. Yeah. Django goes to Manhattan. Django dot dot dot. If you live dot dot dot. Shoot dot dot dot. Oh god. That was that was probably my favorite one Django, to be honest. I also have uh, a bunch of spaghetti westerns I have here for reference, like the Grand Duel and Kioma, the Man with No Name trilogy, of course. <laughs> Navajo Joe. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in the West, of course. The Big Gun Down, or La Reza de Conti. I like the name of that. And it's my most expensive thing I've ever bought. It cost me 40 bucks. Holy shit. And Duck You Sucker, or A Fistful of Dynamite. <laughs> I also have every Tarantino movie here that we can look at. So, uh, going from Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. I have four rooms in here. Do you know what four rooms uh, is? No, no fucking clue. I probably won't talk about it. It's shitty. Jackie Brown, Kill Bill... Death Proof, Inglorious Bastards, Hateful Eight, and Django. Unchained. What is it? Four Rooms? It's an anthology film. It's got Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez and two directors who went nowhere. <laughs> and it's not a good movie. <laughs> Don't miss the fun in this hilariously sexy comedy that has Antonio Banderas, The Mask of Zorro, Madonna, Evita? It's got a cast. It's got Tim Roth. Tarantino said it himself. Bruce Willis. Isn't Tarantino in all his stuff? I don't know much about movies, uh, but isn't Tarantino in like all of his stuff? He has a foot fetish, you know that? Yeah. Have you not seen From Dust Till Dawn? <laughs> he gets champagne poured in his mouth with a lady's foot. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, anyway, so I think we're going to start the podcast with what have you been playing slash watching the last two weeks, Daniel? Uh, schoolwork. <laughs> oh god, that's not exciting. I've been I've been reading Microsoft Server Essentials and Routing Guide. That sounds funny. <laughs> and, um, organizational behavior management for my online organizational <laughs> behavior class. Damn, <laughs> something with penas, something exciting. Okay, Xenoblade Chronicles Two. I heard that's balls. I fucking love it. No, you heard it's balls and you heard it's good because it's like mixed opinions from everyone. I heard it's very Japanese. Yeah, and I love it. So I downloaded I I, <laughs> I downloaded the the Japanese subtitles and I turned on the or the English subtitles. Turn on the Japanese, Japanese voice, voice acting. So you had to download it because it was a free DLC. So I'm playing it like that because the English subtitles is by like Welsh people. It's really, really bad. After this, you should watch it. Oh, you it. mean the dub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're by, like, Welsh people. I like Welsh people. What's wrong with them? Are you getting racist already, right there? <laughs> Talking about Django and Django? Against the Welsh of all people? Fuck. Okay. It's just been Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm, like, 27, 8 hours in. I'm, like, chapter 3 or 4. 27 hours in? Yeah. Chapter 3? I just unlocked the last portion of the main menu. I couldn't do it yet. Holy <laughs> shit! So you finished the tutorial, the tutorial after yeah. 30 hours. Yeah, I guess you could actually say that, because I just unlocked, like, the ability to hold all the blades you can, the three... And what's your verdict so far? I'm fucking loving it. Oh god. I'll don't, play it for like hours if I can. That. It's really, really <laughs> have one episode and then yeah, we're doing Xenoblade and we're back four months later. I will not be very happy. It's really good. That. It's really, really good. No, the have you seen the battle system and stuff? It looks interesting, but it's, it's like, headed with a lot of fucking yeah. JRPG garbage that I will yeah. hate. You have to collect fifty two Zingo eggs and five hundred uh bajulo bobs and do a bunch of stuff like that i like it though oh. it's, it's just xenoblade anything else um i mean movies movicles well i mean since i watched django and django um i watched stephen king it again 
The new one. Did you watch it on the Blu-ray? Yeah, I bought it like a couple days ago. Oh, did you still like it? I, I like, like that movie, but it's yeah. not. It's not scary. No, it's just not really. I thought it was terrifying the first time around. Yeah, but you're. You, you know, I'm a, yeah. You got you got spooked by Dead Space. <laughs> but no, I found no. I watched it with uh, uh, Lisa and Leroy. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it with them because they'd never a seen couple, it. Couple and they really of our liked D&D it. D&D crew. Yeah, they yeah, really liked it. Something. We're also petting Dan's cats as we record here because we can't resist that that, that, <laughs> that sweet fat poo action. Poo's your name? She's really deadpan. And... Yes, yeah, she's cute. What the hell? She knows what she knows how you can she can sell herself. That's that's what I'm into. Them, um, them deadpan girls. Come here, you you, you chill. Yeah, it D- Django, PUBG, I guess. PUBG. Yeah. PUBG. Not as much with school, but I have been playing it. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Not too much. What about you? Um, do you play many games? Like, do you play like, new games? Or do you, like, go to, like, EB games and Pawn Stars sometimes? Uh, I've been playing Don't Starve. Oh, yeah. And I've realized I don't like it. No, me neither, really. I, like, I did it a long time ago and you could, like, pre-order it. Like, I pre-ordered it. Oh, you played, did the early yeah. access? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am playing on my PS4, really so like I think it's the full release. I think it came with the DLC range yeah. or something, too. Yeah. I, I just think that... For a game like that, I just want a Minecraft that doesn't look like shit. Like, I just want to build a nice base and hang out in it and have, like, chicken friends, but I don't want it to be Minecraft. Well, I don't know. It was int- – like, I have you watched people beat it and stuff? It's yeah. really interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, but I don't want to put that much yeah, effort Yeah, no, me neither. That's, that's the thing. That. Like, I don't want to put that much effort in either, but it's interesting to, like, The only watch. character that I like in it is, is Willow. Is that the... That's the girl, the first yeah. character you unlock. But, like, when she gets insane, which happens a lot, she lights everything on fire. So it's really hard to make her not starve to death. Yeah. So... I don't know. It's... it's. Do you not like the style? Of... No, I like the, the style. style. I think that's yeah. what it is. I really like the art style and stuff, but I think the gameplay is just letting me down because it's just, like, another survival game. Yeah. It's pretty basic. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's interesting, but I don't... I don't want to put the time into games. it to do it. I booted up Fallout 4 for five seconds because they had a new, uh, <laughs> they had a new creation a club. A new doodad. Yeah. Oh, creation club. Yeah. I don't like it on principle, but I, they gave stuff away for free, so I still go back and check it every once in a while. Yeah. I think that's the gimmick because then you, you want to spend You want to look at it and you see it and then you're like, oh. They released months, like, a proper couple things. Like, they released a big, like, settlement update where you can make, like, your own donuts and donut shop and shit. I'm not, not really. buying that. But they also put in another little quest thing. My big problem with this is when, when they were describing it, I wanted it to be like someone makes a quest line full of like new armor and weapons and that mm-hmm. hasn't happened yet. It's just been like fucking settlement packs and skins and shit, <laughs> which is upsetting. And the new thing they released was like a tunnel snake thing, like the tunnel snakes from Fallout yeah, 3. Yeah, And they came up with the gun, the original 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout 1. Yeah. But... It, like, it's supposed to be a revolver, and they just gave it a 10 millimeter fucking animations from Fallout 4. That really pissed me off. They're really lit. It, I love revolvers in games, and it really pisses me off, because the ones in Fallout 4 suck. They really just suck. So, yeah, I was frustrated with that. Other than that, with games, I tried to play a little bit of Wasteland 2 again, but... Did you ever get far? I got like halfway it? through Oh, no, you didn't ever be it, though. And that was in the summer, and I'm just trying to get back into it, but it's yeah. tough. It's tough. I keep making teams of, like, you as, like, the guy who swings heavy blunt objects into people. and like That's me. And uh, a couple other people I know. Because it's always fun with low games like that to make characters. your team your actual team. I did the yeah. same with XCOM. Yeah. But uh, with movies, what did I watch? Did that? you watch these today? Yeah, I watched them both oh, today. Oh, shit. Because I, I didn't watch them last night because I was watching yeah. other stuff. I watched, I watched Unchained yesterday and then uh, 1966, like... Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. We were supposed to get together and watch them, but you were you couldn't. I found a good stream of that on YouTube. Nineteen sixty six. Yeah. Colors are probably off because I'm not talking about color a lot, you bitch. I don't know. I don't think they were. I wanna. I wanna start. Oh, what movies? Yeah. Say what movies I watched. I watched The Founder again, which is still good. The McDonald's one. Yeah. Yeah. I watched. Dark Knight Rises, which is still good. Yeah, you told me that. I always watched after I watched it because I watched it on opening night and I watched Unchained on opening night too when I was younger. Oh, it came out five years ago. Unchained. Yeah, it's Christmas. I didn't fucking know that. That's old. that's five years. Well, fucking Hateful Eight came out two years ago now. That hmm. feels like yesterday. But so uh, yeah, I watched those and I watched The Shape of Water, which I just told you was yeah, fucking yeah. amazing, and I'm in love with Sally Hawkins. 
she's amazing. It started with started with Blue Jasmine. I watched that and I was like, oh, she's really good. And then it was Happy Galaxy. I'm like, oh no, I'm starting to fall for it. And then Shape of Water is just like, she's twice my age, but that's okay. We can make it work, Dan. <laughs> What's her name? Sally Hawkins. Yeah, he's gonna do some intense googling right now. Is she like attractive? Yes, she's a wondrous wonderkin child. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, she's from Maudie. Yeah. Uh, did you watch Maudie? I wanted to. I saw a preview so of it. I. It looked I cool. It too. Sally Hawkins is the best. I mean, Shook's fun to hang out with. Shook's like the type of guy to play Monopoly with you. <laughs> she's not really that attractive to me. But uh, she's not like ugly, I guess. It's her and like Haley Steinfeld. Haley Seinfeld? Steinfeld. Oh, I don't care anymore. And like, yeah. Okay, I want to pre. Uh, preface this going in enough of my rambling <laughs> i want to i want to preface this before we start by saying i'm not a movie buff <laughs> like at well, all neither am i yes I, you are what I, the fuck i guess i have 700 yeah and you like went to school for films no and shit? well i took a few film classes yeah probably. yeah that's a movie buff that's okay. what they call a movie buff like, I had to write down the director's name and the person's name because I don't know actors. Sergio Corbucci? Yeah, I thought it was Corbuccio, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so which yeah, one? Yeah, Sergio Corbucci. Is it Corbucci? Yeah, Corbucci. Oh, God, I guess I'm misremembering. Do you want to start with... Nero. Okay, here's the thing. Do you want to start with Unchained or do you want to start with... I want to start with the older one because I've never, like... You ever watched it before? You've seen China no, before, right? No, fuck no. What the fuck do you do all day, Dan? Just play pop good? <laughs> I've never seen Django, and I had it on Blu-ray. I just never watched it. Oh my god. Um, yeah, Django 1966. I have like two notes about first one. I have like one, but I don't think I've really ever watched movies that old. Like I have this much notes. Tons. I have. I watched three pages um, of like insane mental patient scroll. When's the Maltese Falcon from? Like uh, that's from like. I think it's. It's 40s. Yeah, that's the... I'm trying to remember if it came before or after Castlevania. Maybe 41. I don't know. That's the oldest movie I watched. This is probably second because I don't really watch older movies. Uh, You've never seen Nosferatu or anything? Have you really seen any I know what it's from because I've seen the Spongebob episode where Nosferatu (laughs) clicks up and down the thing. Uh, You've never seen any silent movies or anything? No, I've never watched a silent movie. Okay. What am I, a fucking Neanderthal? I have sound I have now. sound in real life. They need to, I have they the need joy to of invent, sound. They need to invent sound um, okay. before you can watch movies like that. Um, they need to invent color in the in the 50s. I wrote down, so Django 1966, the first thing that I very okay, so remember. Okay, starting with Django? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I want to start with the 1966 one. I wrote down, song I wish was on the Mojave radio. It sounds like a Fallout song, doesn't Django. it? Django! Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Always been alone. <laughs> yeah. It's in the new one too, eh? Yeah, it's yeah. I saw. I liked movies. that. Like, I'm sure you'd like it more if you were like a 60 year old man and you were like, I fond- it's on my. I fondly remember this song, but I watched it like two days later and I, I was watched, like, hey. I had it's on my iPod. It's a firm staple <laughs> on my iPod in yeah. my Western section. The soundtrack for both of these movies because they're basically the second one had the first one had like two songs, right? It had that song and La Corsa, which yeah, is yeah. also in Django, and, and it had. I had some other songs. I think Louis Bacalov, I think that's his name, did the did the soundtrack. I couldn't for fucking those. tell you. For most of the movies that I have here, like all these delicious, wiggle those Blu-rays. All around. these delicious movies I have. Ennio Morricone, I think that's how you say his name. He did the soundtrack for all of them, <laughs> and he also did the soundtrack for Hateful Eight. Because K- K- Tarantino stole a bunch of his movies. He didn't steal, but like licensed a bunch of his music <laughs> to put in his films. Okay. And all, the- and then finally Morricone was like, "Fuck it, I'll do your own movie." And, then- <laughs> and he's Dracula. He's Dracula now, and he did the soundtrack, to some original songs for Hateful Eight. Sounds good. You ever seen Hateful Eight? Have you seen what other Tarantino movies have you seen? And in- I'm assuming you haven't seen any. Spaghetti Westerns no. besides this. Have you um, seen any of these? I don't think so. I'm not going to count four rooms because I brought four rooms, <laughs> so I'm not going to count that. Have um, you seen... Uh, any West Spaghetti Westerns? West of Reservoir Dogs? No. Have you seen Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown? Pulp Fiction's not a Spaghetti Western. I'm talking about Tarantino, oh, you bitch. okay. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Pulp Fiction. Not Jackie Brown. No. Is there a song called Jackie Brown? No. Yeah, I think it's like... That's Leroy Brown. No, it's not. I go. No, 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 no. Kill Bill? Ah, uh, no. Death Proof? No. I know what it is. Inglorious Bastards? Ye- That's the one where they kill Nazis, right? Killing Nazis. Yeah, yes. and the, the bear Jews in it? Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. And then, I'm assuming you haven't seen the hateful. No. You've only seen Inglorious Bastards <laughs> and Pulp Fiction before this. I haven't Holy seen Inglorious Bastards. i just seen the one where they kill the Jews. I mean, kill the Nazis. 
Yeah. I saw a clip on YouTube. <sighs> okay. I guess I am a movie man. I watched The Room last night, though. That was an experience. Is that fun? We yeah. do it. We have it at our local university where they get, <laughs> I bet there's a lot of like midnight movies at universities yeah, where, they, well, where they get together and throw some but, and shit and play did they, did they play football last night in front they of the they played football and yeah. people were getting really annoyed at one of the groups and then in the middle of the movie some dude yelled spoon fight and he I thought he was like joking at first but I realized he was actually mad at one of the groups he walked up with like a fistful of spoons Django a fistful of spoons he <laughs> He walked up and, like, violently threw them at this dude's head, and it looked like it probably hurt a little bit. When I was there, the first time I went to see the room... Was there a white guy that was bald there, and he, like, he, like the I, audience? Last time I was, was, was there was, like, four years ago, Dan. Yeah, so I okay, I don't know. The only thing I remember is that some guy brought a big spoon, like a big <laughs> yeah, spoon, like this God, big, yeah. like my whole arm length. <laughs> And he used it as a catapult to launch <laughs> spoons, spoons, off, spoons. The, off the balcony. <laughs> Did you sit upstairs? Yes. I'm sure the view from the spoons falling through the air is Did majestic. you sit downstairs? I, sit, I sat Why? downstairs and you could see like dozens and dozens and dozens of spoons Gotta going into spoon the... goddess. <laughs> so you don't get pelted in the eyeball. Uh, anyway, 1966 yeah. Django, what's your note? Okay. Um, what are your notes, Dan? Because I have three pages. I got a page and a half-ish, almost two pages. Oh, what's your verdict on this movie? Do you I liked it. Like? I had fun with it. Yeah, yeah it's a good-ass movie. I mean, yeah, I had fun with it. I mean, what's that I mean mean, Dan? It's a fun movie. <laughs> I don't think it compares like the new Django, obviously, but it's a different time. Like You can't really compare two movies, movies like that. Movies were shit back then. Yeah, you, you can't can really compare s- movies you, like well, that. Well, yes, you can. You but. can, but you can't be like... You, you, can't, you, you, can't, have to, you have to take into consideration these movies. The budget 50, and the shit. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Apart. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's a really good movie. I had fun with it, and I'd probably make someone else watch Give it. Give some of your notes, Dave. But it's like comparing Monsters University and Monsters, Inc. There's just no comparison. You just can't do it. What? <laughs> okay. I had... I started out, and I didn't... Is Django James a bit of a fucking dickhead in that movie? They're both dickheads. But Black Django's... He's a cool guy. Jamie Foxx Django. Is that who that is? Yeah, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx? Yeah, Seriously? He's a big oh. famous actor. He was in Baby Driver and Ray and like a lot of other movies. Holy shit, was he the black guy in Baby Driver? Yes! Oh my god. My life's opening up to me. Oh god, you're now a movie buff. <laughs> That's true. A Baby Driver's so fine. We'll talk about that. I want to I wanna talk about that one time. Probably that was such a good movie. Okay. Uh, it started up, I have Mexican banditos, and then an equal sign that says, not nice boys. None of, no one's a nice boy. I know, boy everyone's a dickhead, because <laughs> I didn't see the Americans yet. And I was like, oh, the movie's about him fighting Mexicans. And then it was like, wait a sec. A man wandering through the desert leads to back whipping. <laughs> well, yeah, I was like, oh, the, the white men are going to save them from the Mexicans. And then the white guys are like, what's well, yeah. a burner? Well, you have this and I was like, oh, interesting okay. reveal of the, of the red, or the red scars. On yeah, the yeah. Head. I didn't know who... Yeah. yeah. Well, you hear that shot ring out at the beginning, and you think, yeah, it's, thought, you think it's going to be Django, yeah. and then they pan up up the hill, and it's they like, got these me. red it's, men. Well, yeah, I thought they were going to be nice. I was like, oh, it's probably like Django's crew. And then they're like, yeah, let's burn her. I like how it's like, like okay, let's burn her. No, let's burn her at the stake. <laughs> so they so thought... We're like, introduced to Django and Maria right off the beginning. He, and he kills... I, I didn't write it down, but I remember it. He kills everyone at the same, same time. You can hear different bullet shots, but they all fall down at the same time. You know what's really interesting? Uh, he does that. There's a lot of like, like fake fanning in this movie. You want to know what the what thing is? is? It? Fake what? Fanning. It's when you. Oh oh yeah. When you yeah, take yeah, a single yeah. action, you hold the trigger, and you smash the hammer back, and mm-hmm. it keeps firing. Do, do you want to know some precursor stuff for this film? I just know offhand. Sure, tell me. All the wrinkles on Django's face are fake. You want to know why? What do you mean? How? They painted like you know those little <laughs> like crow's feet he's yeah. got. They painted them on. You want to know why? Why? Because Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Because Clint Eastwood did Fistful of Dollars. Then and get, and then he was get. like, paint more wrinkles on that boy. Yeah! They were like, That's Clint Eastwood fun. did Fistful of Dollars. <laughs> and they were like, just paint, just paint. <laughs> Paint more wrinkles on them. Yeah. That was the requirement. Yeah, so well, that's... I'm fine with that. I didn't know. I, I didn't notice. So Django steals a lot from from the Dollars trilogy, but a fistful of dollars, a few dollars more than The Good, Mad, and the Ugly. And The Good, Mad, and the Ugly is my favorite movie, but I say Django is like on par with a few dollars more and better than Fistful. You pull up Spaghetti Western Database on, on that. On that well, on how that. many Django movies was there? There's probably like 50. Because, yeah, I looked at, I, when I tried to find a stream of the first one, the 1966 one, I got like an article of like 50 
And I was like, oh. Django, if you Are shoot. they all like. No, there's only one official <laughs> like one. Like official. And then Frank the other O'Dear. ones are just Django or, whatever's. Yeah, it was 66. It's just like a licensed name. 66 was Django. And then they made a bunch of weird Django ripoffs for like 10 years. And then in the late 70s, when Spaghetti Westerns were dying down. They made Django a few live shoot to whatever the fuck. <laughs> I liked that title so much. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Django, kill, dot, dot, dot. If you live, comma, shoot, exclamation point. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Once upon a time in the West. Holy shit, this guy's like famous. Sergio Leone, yeah, he did all the good ones. Sergio Le- Leone. Sergio Leone, yeah. He also did Once Upon a Time in the West, and he did uh, Duck, You Sucker, and he did like Once Upon a Time in America and a few other films. So Django, look, it's yeah, I Django. saw he was like six, six. Yeah, but it, face it, to face, that's a in Tarantino's list, which they have on here too. I think it's third. I think. Why do Why do Italian people like making these movies so much? Because people ate them up because they're full of violence and sex. Is, 60s. That's why they're called it, Spaghetti Westerns, that's it? They're just made well, by Italian directors? They were made by a lot of Italian directors. They were shot... I knew this Dollar Soldier was shot in Spain. <laughs> and it was a bunch of European money. They basically just, like... They made the Fistful of Dollars, and it's a ripoff of Yojimbo. And they are just like, let's just make this movie. And then people ate it up! And then they were like, we need to make more! And then it became a genre. It's like Hammer movies. The first ones are really good. And a lot of them, the later ones, are good, too. But, like... Then they got more people and it became sloppy. Yeah. Do you want to go through more notes on the original Django? I, I had fun with it. I stopped. Okay. Like, I start. I started making notes for Unchained and about halfway through I stopped because I was just genuinely watching the movie and then I caught back into it at the end. Yeah. But I still remember everything. What other notes do I have? I have why carry around a coffin because I didn't know that was it's, cool. Because it's symbolic, Dan. Did you not know? Even no, from I the picture I sent you. <laughs> That's a good reveal. Know. Well, um, the the basic plot. I'm not gonna go through. Plot yeah. Plot, but it was movies back then are always weirder. Like that timeline was what like two days, three days. I don't know something like. That. Yeah, it was like nothing. It was it was cool to me. I like older movies like that for that reason. It, it feels more real. Like it's like two days. Well, there for two days this man with a coffin is going through the desert, and he shows up in a Tombstone. Not the Tombstone, but a town called Tombstone. Is I that guess because it it's empty. Yeah. Oh, that fucking muddy town? Yeah, mud, mud. Oh, holy shit, yeah. Mud town. The muddiest set oh, I've ever fuck, seen. fuck, yeah. That How one? do they do that? Lots of water. Like... <laughs> it might just be naturally like that. He stepped in... Anytime anyone stepped in somewhere, they looked like they were struggling to get out I love of the it. sound design of this movie, because, like, you hear a lot of gun clicking and stuff like that, but every time they step in money, you're like, plop, slurp, dip. <laughs> like, it's really fun. Yeah. Basic plot is this guy shows up with a coffin. Okay. And he saves this lady named Maria. Are you supposed to know, like, this was the first time Django's ever been... Like, Django, scene or Django wasn't like like it, a, it wasn't an already he wasn't character. a mythic character in the lore <laughs> like of Italy. Little kids were like, do you remember ah, Django? Yes. Do you remember the legends like, of Django? Like this would be like seeing Mike Wazowski for the first oh, time. Oh yeah, he's not like some ripoff thing. Like yeah, like he's, old, he's not. It's not like a wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, 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 or yeah, something. yeah. Okay, it's actually just something they made up. I think, okay, I believe. So this man shows up in a town, saves a lady, okay. and he brings her to a whorehouse, yeah, a yeah, cat yeah. house. With Nathaniel, the best character in the film. I was so fucking sad for that guy. <laughs> that was so sad. And then he gets intertwined in this in this war between uh, Major Jackson's Southerners and and Hugo's Mexicans. Banditos. Yes. That's what I was revolutionaries. To <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not in the movie for. They get killed real easily. Those banditos, but they do a lot. The fucking Southerners get killed real easy. Yeah, Django prevails. So, yeah, so he gets to Mudtown. Yeah. And how'd you... I remember you furiously texting me about Mudtown. How'd you feel about Mudtown? It looked... <laughs> it looked fucking deserted. That's what they were That's what they were, that's what they were trying to get across. <laughs> looked fucking sad to live there, I'll tell you that. Not only is it empty and everything's broken, it's the streets are also The streets are just mud. mud. They're not drivable in horses, and they're not drivable through... They're just mud, yeah. So he gets to the to the cat house, and I love this set because everything in there is really eccentric. Like they yeah. have like weird ass statues everywhere, and weird paintings, and everything's like broken down and shitty, but it's it's still cool. Yeah, I I I didn't know who the uh, American dudes were. There was lots of like those shots where he'd be a little bit further away, 
and it ultra zoom in on him. Well, that, that's, that's what a lot of these spaghetti westerns do. I stuff I'm like about. that. Yeah. The landscape of faces. That's that's a big thing in these movies. It's like you have like you haven't seen any other ones, but there's like a big open area that they like focus yeah. in on the landscape, and then they like have like a close up <laughs> in two in like um twenty one by nine of like just some dude's pimply <laughs> ass gross face. Yeah, everyone was sweating a lot because it was a bright sunny day. That was a good time though. So he gets Jan- going through the plot. He gets Django gets this 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 cat house. And okay. it's, it's full of uh, droopy ladies, except for the Creole lady. And then uh, those ladies didn't seem that bad. They seemed like fun dudes to hang out with. They did seem like I I describe them as colored hens. Yeah. Like they looked like painted hens. Yeah. The woman. Okay, I got this too. I just wrote down like shit like this. The woman's name was Maria, just so I could remember it. I don't know when this happens, but do you remember when the Mexican guy falls into the quicksand? And he's gone in, like... Oh, that's the beginning. Is that's, that the that, very beginning? That's okay. A, that's a southerner. He's gone in, like, like two seconds flat. Oh, Django does the same fucking thing. <laughs> like, he slips into there, and he's just gone. You know what? Let's not do a plot summary. Let's just talk about the stuff we fucking eh, like. Okay. I love the color in this movie. The color of this movie is fucking great. And I don't know if you got that from the stream. But, like, all that red fucking pops. And Django's, like... Uh, yeah. Union uniform fucking pops. It's blue as yeah. fuck. And I'm colorblind. So yeah. You, I'm partly colorblind. So you gotta tell yeah. when I'm like noticing colors. They did a good fucking job. I watched my stream on a YouTube channel called Indian Hollywood Movies. Did it have subtitles? No, it didn't have subtitles. I'm surprised. Was it dubbed? Yeah. Did I do something bad? Yeah. I watched it subbed. You should you should have come <laughs> out the Blu-ray. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was fine. Everyone was like. Everyone was talking all right. You could tell it was dubbed. But everyone I've was never talking seen all right. the dub. I wonder if it's any good. I didn't find you it bad. Watch my Blu-ray. I didn't find it bad, and I watch subtitle shit all the time. And I usually don't like dub stuff. But well, I all the um, the thing about the, a lot of spaghetti westerns is they get like big American stars in, except for this movie because it was cheap as chips. So it's Franco Nero Italian. Yes. Okay. That's kind of what it sets apart. Because the rest of the movies they have like James Coburn and like Clint Eastwood and shit. And mm-hmm. they'd be speaking English, and everyone else would be speaking Italian. <laughs> so, so they wouldn't even do recordings of voices, and they'd have everyone come in and just dub over the recording, like the audio, or the, the video fuck? recordings. That's what they did in the movies. I bet that's what they did with this movie, too. But Okay, I really liked, I liked all the fighting. The fighting There good. was no blood, but I liked all the fighting. Did you like the fucking, um, one of my favorite scenes is like, towards the middle of the film when Hugo and his men are trying to get that gold and they're going into the fort mm-hmm. and, and Nathaniel's dri- no Nathaniel's driving the car and he looks like he's gonna shit himself <laughs> he looks like oh my fucking god and he gets in there and they pop out the back that's so good well there is some gruesome stuff in the 60s I mean when they're firing that machine yeah, gun yeah see the that's fort, the thing that I have to remember like a lot, I, of guys, a lot of guys fall over but like there's also scenes where you pan over and some guys got like blood coming yeah, out yeah yeah like that's the thing I have to remember like Blah blah blah. It's not violent, but it's and like even, this was sixty years ago, so that was fucking even the horrible. scene where Brother Jonathan's ear gets cut off. Oh no! They, I thought they, that was and even, they fucking yeah. stick it in his mouth. <laughs> Can you imagine? Some, that's this is like the <laughs> same sick. few years where the sound of music is coming out, and there, some guy's getting his <laughs> ear cut off and shoved in his mouth. Yeah, I like that scene. A lot of a lot of the things with violence in this film is you got to realize is that like Hollywood didn't do violence. This is the same, like, I think it was 1967. Could you do this for me, Bonnie and Clyde? Bonnie and Clyde, yeah, like, Clyde when when that whole thing happened? Yeah, because yeah. that's when, I guess I'm assuming you know what that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. when they really introduced violence to Hollywood movies. Before then, the Europeans were like, ah, fuck it, and they're just doing everything. <laughs> was that? Was it a movie? Yes, 19... Film? 1967? Yeah, so this is 66, and the Dollar Trilogy were before them. They're pretty, they're pretty violent, too, but... Yeah, the Europeans didn't give a fuck. They were doing it already. But this is one. That's one that they really hmm. got into. That's why they're popular, right? Is because people wanted people to wanted see, to see stuff dudes like that. eating their own ears. Yes. So it was a religious group, obviously, right? It was supposed to be a religious group. I don't know, because John, I, the, the one dude that got the, his ear eaten the thing by himself that's was the, carrying around a Bible. Here's the thing that's the something. worst in this in these films is the overall plot. The overall plot does not make a lot of sense. No, really. Tell me more. Because Django, I think, gives his backstory, and I think I wrote it down. That So the story I got in my notes here about Django's backstory is that... So I, think, I don't even have anything about So I think Django's backstory is that his wife was killed by Jackson. Oh, he, wait, yeah. While he was fighting in the Civil War, maybe. Because yeah. the, the Civil War was the mid-1860s, but at the end, when he's on the cross, the cross says the woman in the grave died in 1884. So, 
I think timeline in this in these films are pretty garbage, and they're all using guns from like the late like they have eight, Winchester eighteen ninety fours and stuff. So I don't think here's the thing is that like where this is in time and place in Spaghetti Westerns doesn't it's just somewhere. doesn't matter. It's, it's yeah. About well, ma- that's the thing I got from it. Yeah, I was never questioning. It's about it. masculinity and, and and shooting Mexicans and, and killing white men and sexy ladies, and that's what it's about. There's never any nudity in this movie, was there? No. They really didn't start in, no. like, movie nudity till the 70s. I, don't yeah. think. I know Dirty Harry has a naked lady <gasps> who's dead in it. And oh. a few other things like that. Another note I have that I, <laughs> I like this scene a lot. It was when they're letting the Mexicans out, and they, they're, they like, they're running away, and he shoots them before they, like, get over top of the yeah, hill. Of course playing, but yeah. did they just speed up that film reel? Because they're not running that fast, are they? I don't think so. The Mexicans are running really, really, really fast. Like, they're sprinting really hard, and it looks really weirdly timed everything else. Maybe it's because you stream this on YouTube. I don't know. Everything else was perfectly fine. I've never noticed that on uh, my... Maybe I'm just insane. Uh, That's a given. I wrote it down because they were running so fast. Do you want another one review that's on the back of this? It sure what does it say. It says, A Musty Spaghetti Western, and and the publication is DVD Verdict. So that seems very... Is that all it says? <laughs> yes. What the fuck? <laughs> well, if but DVD Verdict said it... I haven't done any... Like, I know some things about the production stuff for this film, but I haven't done anything of how well it did over here. Because I watched the, the intro with... The, 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 it came to, like, what? Yeah, I watched huh. the intro with Franco Nero, and Franco Nero said... This is... I think they did the interview in the Do they speak English as well now? Yes. Yeah. I don't fucking know. What are they speaking in Italy? Italian, bro. He problem. spoke English in Django Unchained. He's in it. Oh, fuck. Who was he? he was, remember the Mandingo fight? When you yeah. get introduced to... The Mandingos? No, to Calvin... Calvin Candy. What's yeah, the yeah, actor's yeah. name? Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. You know the other guy who owns the Mandingo? That was Franco Nero? That was Franco Nero. Wasn't he I remember he. I remember he asked... What's your name? It's Django. The D is silent. He said, I know. And then he walked out. Oh, I don't know. Fuck's sakes, Dan. Uh, was that him? He got a little bit fat, I think. He wasn't fat. Wasn't he? He was He was, He was. was a sexy 70-something-year-old <laughs> man. Well, it makes more sense now. Okay. Uh, I also have Ringo is so fucking ugly, holy shit. Ringo? Ringo. They call him Ringo. Oh, the Scar guy. Yeah, the Scar guy. You know who he looks like? And I think they tried to get him. Is Klaus Kinski. Klaus Kinski. He's in A Fistful of Dollars. and I think he's in A Few Dollars More, actually. He's an ugly fucking European man who was who raped his children. But, what? But was in a lot of films in the... In Wait, the, what? Yeah, in the 60s and 70s. What? Was what was the, his name? Klaus Kinski, and he, what was, did he, he, he was in the remake of Nosferatu. He was Nosferatu, and I think they tried to get him, and they didn't get him. Klaus, the guy who played Ringo is also the guy in the opening scenes of For a Few Dollars More, who Lee Van Cleef shoots. I know you don't know who that is. What the heck? He, is, but... he looks like Steve Buscemi. Oh God! He looks like weird Steve Buscemi <laughs> from Parallel Timeline. This with a bigger. That's finger. weird. That's, that's Sam Shepard. <laughs> Why is there a picture of Sam Shepard there? I don't know. What the fuck? Klaus Kinski, you never played that childhood game? Klaus Kinski, Klaus Kinski, Sam Shepard. What the fuck? Was that Klaus Kinski or the playwright Sam Shepard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's him. In the... Yeah, he looks like Steve Buscemi. Oh, God. Except he's evil. So he raped it? What? what? I don't want to talk about this in the book. Okay. <laughs> what did he do? I don't understand. Is he? Did he not go to jail? I don't think so. It was the 70s. I think he died. What do you mean? You can't just... (laughs) Yeah, he raped his kids. That was the 70s. That's not what I'm saying. Who wasn't? (laughs) Fuck off, Dan. One of his his quotes is, I don't need anybody to tell me how to be alive. He said that to his daughter, I heard. Oh my fucking God. Don't cut this. (laughs) Oh, I'm cutting it. Weird. He, He married a lot of women. I wonder why. Weird Steve Buscemi, eh? Well, so he liked Ringo. <laughs> no, I didn't like Ringo. He was fucking ugly. Well, he gets murdered. In yeah, I know. Five seconds I, yeah, I know. I'm really happy. Um, what else did you like about this film? What else stood out to you? Django's just a cool boy. He's a, he's the kind of guy I'd get a drink with. He, he's a Clint Eastwood ripoff. He just seems like a cool guy. Is Clint Eastwood cooler? No comment. I think they both, <laughs> they both... 
they I, both have the obviously merits. the production had the idea that they wanted just another Clint Eastwood, but I think Frank O'Neill does it differently enough where this is a it's an, it's like his own character. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, ju- it's not just this is Clint Eastwood except with an Italian man. This is a valuable like reinterpretation of that archetype. I think. Yeah. I bet there's a lot of other spaghetti westerns I haven't seen that are shitty that are like I'm Clint Eastwood again. <laughs> I bet all the Django <laughs> ripoffs are like that. Like, I want to watch some of them. I was really tempted to watch the one. It was like, uh, it Django Return of the Space Women. The the title card was like just him pulling a like. Does he pull a coffin around all the time? Is that just what Django? Maybe that's what he does in the ripoffs. I mean, he's a man in a Union uniform dragging a coffin. Like, um, I put before I realized they didn't give a fuck about reality. Every shot is either head or heart. Everyone died instantly. Well, do you want to talk about some of the... Because I could talk about... I like this whole fucking movie. I had fun with it, yeah. I liked what about... It. Did you like the music? I like my... F- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the music I like a lot. the serious tunes. I like the Django beginning. I like the beginning. I like, I like I... La Corsa, which Tarantino uses again in... What's, uh... the, what's the song called at the beginning and the ending? Same with Django. That's what it's called, yeah. yeah. Django! Yeah, yeah, that one. That's I like called. that. Uh, of course, is the one where they, they play when they're shooting the guys running away. Uh, it's mm. watching too. Mm-hmm. But um, I love the 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 theme music for Hugo's revolutionary gang. <laughs> <laughs> I liked all of those guys. <laughs> they were really fun. They I think... seemed like the parties at the bar was way better for the women. When the white guys came, all the women were sad. When the Mexican guys came, all the women were real happy. That was how it was. All the women fucking hate. They were like, oh, Je- what's his name? I have it written down. Major Jackson. They were like, oh, Major Jackson's coming. He's really mad. I guess got to cheer him up. And there would be like 50 Mexican banditos coming in. They had the fucking time of their life. I guess that's true. It's that, true. That, I like that party scene where Django's planning on stealing the rest of the gold. Yeah. And they keeps cutting back to like fucking Hugo chewing on one of the girls and people playing music and dancing around and shit. They do a lot of uh, they do a lot of close-ups in that scene. Like when Django's fighting uh, Ricardo, mm. the guy who gets in a fist fight. Yeah, with. yeah. Uh, that scene's really cool. Did you like that? Yeah, yeah, scene? yeah. yeah, yeah. They start whipping each other with belts and How do you, uh, someone shot him? How do you die? Ricardo wanted Maria. Yeah, 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 and, yeah I know that. And then Django Maria didn't kill him, did he? Yeah, he did. And then he pulled a gun on Hugo because Hugo said no, and then Django was like, fuck this, and they started but didn't, fist fighting. didn't Hugo kill Ricardo? Because then Hugo was like, saved your life. Didn't he do that? Did, how, like, did Django kill him in the fist no, fight? No, he saved fucking Hugo's life, because Ricardo oh. was going to shoot him. Oh, yeah. They were fighting, hitting each other belts and shit, and that fight scene <laughs> was really cool. And then Django, they're on the piano, and Django hits him. No, he sh- Django takes a rifle, shoots it, powder blinds him with the shot, and then Ricardo falls backwards into a pickaxe. Oh, yeah! Yeah, see, that's what I was going to say. I knew he died by... I said something about that. Um, a lot of cool stuff in this film. Like, a lot of, like... I like Spaghetti Westerns, so they take those themes of, like, shitty Westerns. Because American Westerns are getting stale by this point. Really stale. They take a lot of themes in those movies, and they reinterpret them really violently and really neat. Yeah, I have Django as a pickaxe man. Because I remember how, he di- how Ricardo died, and I was... I think I blanked out for like a second and I was like, wait a second, where the fuck did Django get a pickaxe from? And I was like, oh, he like, f- he fell into it. Yeah. I was like, he oh. fell so hard he managed <laughs> six inches of steel in I his back. I was like, oh, that's how he died. Do you like the mud fight that um, happens? With, with all the when, women when that lasts Jonathan's for like, like, you should fight Maria! And they start fucking like It was like, like two minutes of just mud. wrestling in the mud and they were really fucking muddy. Like they were drenched in mud. And then uh, they're like, the, the, yeah, that's my cat. You can hear a little bit. Sometimes she's a bit ornery as the. She's full of meows. She's, yeah. She's fat. Um, well, yeah, the Mexicans were like coming around the bend and they're like covered in mud. And then one of the girls is like, oh, we should go get cleaned off. And it was, I was like, oh, that'll take a while. Yeah, that was an interesting scene. I don't know what, what merit it had running in. So um, was she like. What would Maria? All, yeah, like she, Maria, was, she was in trouble because she was, started with the Maria, white guys. Maria was one of the women at the cat house. Left for the Mexicans. She, no, she left for Major Jackson. Okay. She left for Major Jackson, and then she escaped to the Mexican. Yeah, guys. and then tried to and get back. And then she back. tried to escape. Okay. And that's when they caught her. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if this is the timeline, but when they said they were gonna burn her, I was like, 
She's a witch. She's a witch. And I was like, man, That'd probably fun. I was like, probably too late for that. It's not the eighteen hundreds. That's the movie we should make, like spaghetti western, but witches. Because the timeline in this is all fucked up. Have you ever seen Vin Diesel, The Last Witch Hunter? That sounds horrid. Is that the one with Eli- with Elijah Wood? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. I have yeah, not seen is. that. Me and Cassie watched it. Uh, Cassie's my girlfriend. Me and Cassie watched it, and she fucking fell asleep, our, and she's never really fallen asleep. Our podcast artist, the woman who's making all the <laughs> art for us because we're not talented enough. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, she fell asleep to that movie, and all it was was, like, Vin Diesel was a immortal Viking from, like, the land before time period. From, uh, with, who he hung out with Petrie and uh, <laughs> the other characters. Spike. Oh, I don't even Ducky. remember their names. Um, yeah, he was, like, an immortal Viking, and then, well, he wasn't immortal until he tried to kill the, the, uh, witch, the witch queen. Woman or, yeah, the witch and queen. And then she cursed then, him yeah, to yeah, cut yeah, witches? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I already guessed the fucking plot. Yeah, and then it ends with, how oh, the fuck does it end? I don't she, care. Yeah, me neither. I sort of forget that. But I think movie. it'd be a cool idea, because I'm writing a book right now, and I'm kind of mixing these themes together, like, I'm basically writing, like, a big phallic book about penises and masculinity nice but it's mixing in like witches it's set in 1870 so i'm putting a little mysticism in there too and i think that's a good thing to explore it's yeah. like this cold hard reality of like we gotta shoot each other to live but also <laughs> there's there's like other shit as well some other things Pooh, you can be our thumbs you, you lovely top of lard town is muddy and sad that was a real fucking muddy town. <laughs> I want to get that out there. If you Mud haven't seen town. this movie, just t- I, you I, can probably get it if you type in Django 1966 town. Like, I, I've i never Django seen Mudd. somewhere that fucking muddy. There's this movie called Open Range, I think, with Robert Duvall and Kevin Costner. And there's a big scene where they're in this, like, muddy-ass town. They have to, like, bridge... Like, they're just like... Well, what was that bridge in Django's opening? Was that, like, the border thing to, like... A, or was that just symbolizing? I have no idea. Uh, that's not the border, I don't think, because... I, I didn't know. I thought it was maybe symbolizing leaving Django something, Django said he or... needs to cross yeah, that bridge. Yeah, th- that's why I thought it was maybe symbolizing don't, leaving don't... his, like, wife, like... Well, that must be a metaphor. Yeah, thing. that's what the, I was cause thinking. Because the, the cemetery's on the other side, but, like... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I was, like, like it moving on, I guess. I don't think it's an actual, like, border <laughs> bridge. That bridge is really shitty. Italian looks like Japanese. Wait, is that Japanese? That's Japanese. Yeah. They like. Yeah, that's Japanese. They like these movies in Asia too. They export. Them yeah, them. that's weird. To me. Like, look at this. I think it's my, fucking I, I think It's my, like water. I think my favorite movie poster is Two Mules for Sister Sarah, but the Japanese poster. <laughs> it looks really cool. I, think I have that in the background of my phone for a long time. <laughs> okay, what else do I have? Um, how do you feel about specific characters? How do you feel about Nathaniel? I felt really He's fucking a lovely sad man. for him. He's a Why lovely did he man. die? Because he got shot by Major He did Jackson. nothing. Yeah. Even, well, him and Django, I were like, oh, they're like friends. And then he's like, Django, don't, please. And he fucking, Django broke all of the plates and shit against oh, the yeah, barrel. Oh, yeah, he just shot And I was like, what the fuck? He just did it cu- just like, Django, you asshole. Because he can. He was like, please, Django, don't. And then he unloaded, like, a whole fucking gun on them. And he's but just, it was like, a cool shot, eh? He, like, sat down and it was, like, zooming in on the Nathaniel. And I was like, oh, that's fucking depressing. It was a cool shot, though. Yeah, I guess. Uh, um, yeah, Nathaniel made me sad. He shouldn't have died. He was just trying to do his life. What about the, the love? Maria? Yeah, the love relationship between them they bang pretty early he just gets to the hotel yeah, yeah, yeah that's basically like, well it's like let's bang yeah but they never did anything else they never went back again or anything like they never had sex again they did when they started living their lives together i bet i haven't seen Maybe. Django two there's a Django two there's an official Django like an two. official Django it's not two Django two but like just get the wikipedia article Django, Django two electric boogaloo oh that that classic scene of the uh, the Gatling gun in the coffin, I thought that was really cool. Did you expect that? <laughs> no, I didn't expect that. I pro- I I guessed it wasn't a body. Like quarter in, I was like, oh, it's obviously not oh a body. Oh my god, that movie is twenty years old. Like twenty years after Django Strikes Again. Is it with like the same people? Not it, at all. Just Franco Nero, directed by Ted Archer. I think this is like one of the last. Twenty years after the events of the first Django. 
In May 2016, huh. it was reported that Franco Nero will reprise his role in the third outing as the titular character entitled Django Lives, with the film taking place 50 years what after the, the event's fuck? original installment. Oh my god. So we're going to have a follow-up episode in a year about Django Lives? Django Strikes Again. Oh yeah, Django Lives could come out. We can go to the movie. <laughs> Django Lives could come out. Um... Yeah, no, like, quarter way through the movie, I was like, yeah, obviously he doesn't have a fucking body in there, but I was like, oh, I wonder what it is, gold or something? Oh, and that's then, later. Yeah, that's later. And then all those, ma- all the mayor, Major Jackson's men are coming for him. Did you like that parallelism between Unchained and this one, how they have red hoods in this, but then the... Movie, white hoods? They have white hoods. But it's, that? it's the same kind of eye hole thing. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, then yeah. in Django Unchained, they're, they're like, like, these eye holes suck. These eye holes suck, dude. Can't see anything out of them yet. I know, like Django you know Unchained's what? tonal, like, shifts really well. Do you know what, um, the story I heard about why they have red hoods in that Mm-mm. movie? Why? They had to go get a bunch of extras, and they're all fucking ugly. <laughs> they're all ugly as fuck, so they just put red hoods on them. <laughs> I think I read that somewhere or something. They might have said it in like, special features. That's those. sad. I think Franco Nero might have said that, but yeah, they literally just like put red hoods on them because they were all ugly as fuck. It's okay. Some people are ugly. Italian men aren't, I don't think. Maybe they're Franco Nero. He's fucking delicious. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess it wasn't a body or anything, but I was like, oh, what is it? And then all those men are coming towards him, and he's, like, hiding behind a beached stump Did you like how, out of nowhere. Did you and, like how that fucking log is just in front of It's just right there. Rock. I swear to God it wasn't there before, because I never saw it in any scene before, and it's, like, a blanched white log that came from the ocean, and it's, like, in front of a saloon, and I was like, oh, he's gonna hide behind that. And then he pulls out, like, a big fuck-off Gatling gun, it's like supposed, a pepper I think it's grinder to be, like, thing. like, a Maxim gun or something. But, like, do you notice that it doesn't feed any ammo? Yeah. It just... <laughs> it just the shells just come out, out randomly from anywhere? From three yeah. obvious, like, blank, like, tubes. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. And he mowed down. No one... No they one takes all, a shot at him. Whole, no one... The whole army walks up and he's just like... <laughs> da, 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 and he kills all down. of them. Well, how many did he kill? They said Mayor Jackson... There like, was 40 of yeah, them. Yeah, like... And there was... Six left at the end, including Major He Jackson. killed 34, 34 men. Uh, he didn't kill Brother brother Jonathan. No, he so didn't he kill, kill Brother Jonathan. That was fucked. Yeah, made a man eat his own ear. That was a good scene. I didn't expect that. That was cool to see. That was actually violent for back then. I could imagine. Anything else you remember? Did you like the ending? I liked the ending a lot. I, I Well, I did like when they go to the uh, army fort. Was that where they stole the gold from? With the Mexican army fort. Yeah, was it the Mexican army fort? <laughs> yeah, Nathaniel looks fucking scared going in. And then they're like, Nathaniel, you brought your girls. And he's like, no, he's, they're like, <laughs> the women are here. And they all get murdered. <laughs> and then all those banditos just like raid and pillage and just steal shit and like shoot how, everyone. Uh, Major Jackson hates Spanish people. And then he gets all his men killed. And then he's like, oh shit. And then he teams up with the Mexican people to kill all of them. Yeah. Makes sense. What a snivy bitch. Yeah, he's a he's a he's an interesting character. <laughs> um, um, so they, do you like my one pro- big problem with this film is what? why why didn't Django just steal a little bit of that gold? Well, I thought why he was. I, I thought he was going to steal all a of bit. that gold. Yeah, that I was gold. like, I was like, oh, he's going to take because he wanted he they what agreed on he 50, to share. fifty or ten percent yeah. or whatever. It doesn't really matter the actual number, but he took yeah. all the fucking gold. And the the Mexican guy Hugo 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 yeah he was like, or Django was asking for his gold and he's like after tonight blah 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 let's Hugo, get out of here. I want my gold. Yeah, and then Hugo wasn't. I was like, oh, he's probably not going to give him his gold or make him do more shit. So I was like, oh, he's going to sneak in, take his part of gold, and easy getaway. And he stole like fucking twenty he uses his, pounds. His multi. Oh. His multi-tool of the West, the coffin. He used it as a bridge, (laughs) as a gold container, as an ammunition storage. He took like 20 pounds of all of their gold and then tried to leave. And he was like, oh wow, this thing's weighing me down. And then he dropped it in like a vat of cocoa puffs at the end. Yeah. Did you like how I had like he had like a beard of mud when yeah. he was trying to get out of the water? It looked like, it looked like cocoa puffs. How what what would that have been on set? Probably just a vat or a pool of water filled well, with like shit. Well, it would have been a mud hole, but they probably just would have put like bits of like styrofoam, colored styrofoam or something like that in there. It huh. wouldn't have been like quicksand. It was quicksand. Have you ever seen quicksand. that guy? In, have you ever seen that guy on YouTube that jump? I don't know if he does anymore. It's a fetish for jumping into quicksand and sinking. 
That's a finish? Yeah, it's I a, guess there's a finish for me. Yeah, there's a dude on YouTube. I don't know if he does anymore. I, it was also found to be fake, obviously. But he would, like, jump into quicksand and film himself, and it'd be like, it looked like it was, like, in the middle would of Would it nowhere. be, like, a POV shot of him slowly? No, it'd be, like, a, it'd be, like, a third-person scene, like, outside of him, and it'd be like, this guy's in the middle of fucking nowhere doing this. And there was, he'd always get out, but there were some points where he went, like, fully under, and, like, bubbles would stop coming up, and everyone was like, oh, he just fucking died. Oh, yeah, he just fucking died. And then he'd upload it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, it was a big fetish thing. I'm pretty sure it still is. The end. <laughs> Do you like the end? Yeah. Uh, well, I felt that was a good scene because it made me feel like depressing. I, for I bet him. you, I bet you couldn't take off a trigger guard with your fucking teeth. No, I didn't. I didn't know what he was doing that, and then I was like, oh, he's gonna like slam it against the thing, and then, and then it looked just... so depressing. He was like fumbling around with it and drop it, and I was like, oh, he's and gonna the name die. Of the Father and the Son <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. Oh man! Da, 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 and he sends off seven shots. Did, is that what seven he, shots out of a six shot? Is, is that what he said in the so? He said oh, amen. That's what he said in the yeah. sub. He didn't say that in the dub. What do you say? He um. A fucking dub. I thought it was fine. I wrote it down. What do you say in the dub? Uh, sad seeing him with broken hands. Why kill Nathaniel? Sad face. And then I said fucking sick ending kills because. Mayor, Major Jackson and the other goons were sitting at the top, of, like standing at the top of the cemetery, and he positioned this perfect. Was that his wife's cross? It, well, it said 1833 to 1884, oh, fucking... <laughs> so it might have been his mom. I'm not sure. 1833 to 1884. Oh, okay. so that's 51. Know, so it may have been his mom. Whatever. His mom or his girlfriend had like the perfect death cross because. It was the perfect angle from there to the door of the cemetery. Yeah. And it might have just been some grave. I don't know. Well, it showed the name, I thought. That's why I thought it might have been important. Yeah, but it didn't say, like, yeah, yeah, it didn't say Cynthia like... Django. <laughs> it didn't say that. I don't know. So, yeah, they were talking, and then Django said something, and then they're like, they, they were like, we can't hear you. And then he's like, can you hear this? And he's like, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> really dumb. And I was like, dang, that's fucking you cool, watch bro. The sub. No, I don't need to after hearing that. I'm always literally, <laughs> literally. I think maybe Jackson says, "I see you're praying. We pray when we're close to death. Let me help you." He said something and about the name praying of the Father. Too. He didn't son, say that though. I know. Holy Spirit, as he shoots the cross, and Jane was like, "Amen." And he no, shoots, he didn't say "Amen." He shoots seven shots out of a six-shot revolver and kills six dudes. I you, counted them because I was like, "That doesn't sound right." And I went and counted them in this bang, one extra bang, shot. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, no, he was, uh, yeah, he was saying, like, you should pray, blah, 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 and then he was like, we can't hear you praying, and then he said something else, and he's like, what? And he's like, can you hear this? Boom, 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 bang, 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 <laughs> and I was like, dang, that's fucking cool. So, uh, I'd watch a Django anime. Django, uh, that's, to to Tokyo Ghoul Django. We're gonna, oh, not even, why do you think I asked you about Afro Samurai? Oh, God! <laughs> so, verdict on... Is that a movie or a show? It's, uh... Most people can't lump it in as a movie, because it was, like... Well, we can talk about that. Yeah, it's... it's You can watch it in a day really, really I easily. Hope it's and then it has... Um, Afro Samurai, it's fucking great. Uh, we should watch it together. Verdict on Django. I liked it a lot. I, I didn't like your plot summary, because I want to yeah. I want to get more itty-gritty into Django and Django. Yeah, me too. I liked this movie just because it was campy. It was fun to watch. Like violent. I don't watch old movies like that, of, and it like kept my of, attention and everything. Ladies, full of birds, full of mud fights and shooting white men. It's a lot of fun. A lot of lot of fun. Yeah. This movie's a lot of fun. It, it kept my attention, and I watched it all. Yeah. Like it was cool. Unchained, I liked a lot, but long movies like that sort of it, wear me out. Here's the thing. I think. I, I think. But this, every scene was like. I think this is the first movie because because Tarantino had a had a editor. Yeah. And she died. Okay. And then his movies got very fucking long. Really? <laughs> so, it's like, not, it's not that funny, but it's, well, it's not funny if someone died, but it's, I mean, that, that's what made Correlation, his really yeah. Long, yeah. Like, okay, so Django and Chain came out, what, 2012, 2013, 2012? 2000, Christmas Day, 2012. Okay, so. Night. And okay. a bunch of people, oh, I want to say my verdict. Yeah, Django yeah. was great. Two nights <laughs> was great. That's it. It's a good movie. So I'll watch it again. And I as a spaghetti watch. western, I think it's better than Fistful of Dollars. I think it's like probably the third best of them, all of them that I've watched. Watch the classics, but yeah, it's a good ass film. It's touching my disc now. Especially <laughs> some of these quotes. Who the fuck are these people? No one. Django is all about excess. Dot dot dot. A thoroughly amped up, over the top epic from L.A. Weekly. 
Well, that's a repeatable. Series. I still like DVD Verdict. I don't know where that's coming from, who it is, or... Yeah. Or what they were on about. <laughs> I had a yogurt. They liked it, apparently. Um, Do you like the yogurt pretzels? No. Okay. I like them. No one else fucking does. My mom doesn't. My girlfriend doesn't. You don't. I'm eating them. They're here. Yeah, they're good. I got them with a bowl. So, Django 2012. Okay. I want to tell you about my theater experience that I did when I watched this opening. Did night. people gun in with uh, actual guns? And shot. You know what happened? <laughs> I watched The Dark Knight Rises on opening night. Okay. Too. I think it was the same year. And that's people actually got shot during that. Well, was that the one? That I wasn't the, in the theater that people got shot. Was that the orange-haired kid one? No. Yeah, the guy who dressed up as the Joker and yeah. shot people. Yeah. yeah. But no, no one shot anybody for Django. At your theater? No. Did people come in cowboy hats? Was it a lot of older people? Oh, or was it more I wanted to say that like we were watching it, me and my cousin. Yeah. And people were walking out. Because it was violent. And I'm like, why, Wait, are you, what? why are you here? The last movie Tarantino did was fucking Death Proof. Why are you people here? Really? I've never been in a movie where people have walked... Not that I can remember, at least. Like, where people walked out. You do see a lot of violent shit in this film. But yeah, I, well, everyone's like a human paintball. You should you should have seen the scene where you get to see Jamie Foxx's fucking dick and boss. <laughs> I think... Yeah, I mean, was there an actual scene where you saw it more closely? Because you only the saw it for a second. Yeah. You're just hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. You just see shaft and balls. Yeah, that's that is, fine. That is a big nutsack on that man. Yeah, I didn't know what it was at first. <laughs> oh my god. Did you um, see the biological diagram? Yeah, I had to stare. Um, you had a freeze frame? Well, yeah, slow. every every body was like a red paintball explosion. They'd be laying on the Not ground. Not everybody. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Django. Unchained, 2012. I, did, I didn't know what to expect with it. Director, Quentin Tarantino. Cast, Christoph Waltz. Was that Dr. Schultz? Dr. King Schultz. Okay. Uh, Don Johnson. Yes. That was Big Daddy. Uh, okay. Leonardo DiCaprio. Sam Jackson. Yeah. Jamie Foxx. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the guy's name? James. Cal- Bruce Stern. Calvin Candy. James Renard. Others. The lady from that White House show. I forget what it's called. Shit. It's a good cast. And yeah. There were no Asian people in it, I don't think. No. Nah. Just, just, just black white men. Just and black, black men. White men. So, would it be weird to, to have felt like... Would it be weird to film for a movie like this? I feel like it would. Mm-hmm. Casting as a slave? You'd be like, I'm here to cast as a slave member. You'd feel weird. I, I would feel weird because I'm white. You'd feel weird as a black guy doing that. How would you know? Because you'd feel weird. Do you think they paid them a lot? No. This, for this movie? For extras? Probably what extras make. I mean, Quentin Tarantino likes to focus on the backgrounds. They probably got to yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually true. Anyway. Okay. The big, uh, lots, of, lots of notes. What time are we at, Dan? Let me, let An me hour or so? Phone. Oh, like time is in 9-11. I guess we'll... Never forget. <laughs> I guess we'll... Uh, uh, we'll kind of keep this to an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just talk. I don't care right just now. Just like this part. So, Django Unchained. What are your, what are your, I, what, this is your first time watching it, Dan. Go yeah, on, okay. Going into it. Going into both films, what did you expect? Which one you watched? Going into the first one, from the pan up I did, I was like, oh, is that Django and his man? But then I was like, no, that's Django. I was like, oh, it's cool. I had a good time with it. This movie, I didn't, I knew the focus was the black guy, but I didn't know that was Django. Like, you used your, your your racist screen. Oh God, cut this! Your racist <laughs> screen was like, was like um, this can't. The main character can't be black. No, I didn't know that was like Django. I thought like maybe Doctor Schultz was something else. Well, going into, I it, thought it was cool that like uh, talking about some of the overarching thing about these two films is they're both really concerned with race. Yeah. Even like that's not something people expect when they see like the first Django's like posters or scenes from the film. It had like lots of Mexican white and yeah. Well, you you could see that stuff. In, well, the like, girl in, Maria was a, a mix. A mixed yeah, a mix. Race. Yeah. And you could see that you could see pictures from like you could see production photos and stuff and not guess what that's about. But yeah. like oh, the overarching thing in both films is race. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So I liked that it opened up with the same music from <laughs> basically the same fucking yeah shots. the same shots and everything. From Django 1966, and it was cool to me because I was like, "Oh, I just well, it's like Django of but old. Not, and it's just a desert, and it pans down, and it's just like a bunch of slaves with yeah. their backs whipped, which is this is a change in tone. But yeah, yeah. But imagine a lot, a lot of whipping like, in both films, but it's more intense and unchained. <laughs> imagine being like, 
a 50, 60 year old man and imagine being back. like imagine being like an old Italian man. Well, yeah, and like, he's like, I remember when I was a yeah, young man. That's I what I'm saying. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I wonder if this one's gonna be good. Oh, <laughs> I see down. this, and oh god, oh no! Those are the men you saw walking out of the theater. I thought that was cool, but do you it, want to go more plot by plot with this one? Yeah. yeah I mean, so spoilers question mark i don't care we just talked about the entirety of the first one this is a book club of sorts yeah, okay. you should expect this so the first little bit is like Django walking up to the Django song which is a nice callback but then you get your introduction to dr king schultz mm-hmm. and his fucking a tooth tooth carriage the, the dentist carriage and, yeah and the uh the two brothers which are called all i have is notes like a bloody hillbilly explosion <laughs> I, I I really like that scene after they kill the one brother and then they're like they shot the other one's horse so it fell on you him kill, you, sh- you killed Roscoe and you shot Ace <laughs> and then he's like they give the, the no, you shot the, Roscoe with his horse and you killed mm-hmm. Ace his brother he, they they gave the three black slaves a gun and Dr. Schultz is like well the whole part of this is yeah. Dr. King Schultz needs Django yeah. to track down this, the the brothers this, this, uh, this spec the three brothers that they're chasing, yeah, yeah. they're from Django's plantation. And he checks on Django, and he takes them from his two brothers, who pull a shotgun on him, so he kills both of them. Well, he kills one of them. <laughs> and then he says, you have two choices. Either, like, get that other guy off. The take guy, that I, horse and haul him to the next town. It's about 37 miles that way. Or put, put a, a bullet in his head. Pull a bullet in his head, bury them both deep. And, and walk to somewhere go to, better. Go to a more enlightened country. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, throwing astronomy majors among you, and the North Stars. That, that way. way. And they all look around, and then Django and him get up on his horse, walk away, and it pans over to the black guys. Now, wait a hear, minute, fellas. You, you, you hear talk like about three this. bullet shots. And Blueberry, like, didn't I give you my last, my last apple? Jonathan, didn't I give you my last apple last week? And you hear boom. And he's no, just, wait. No, wait. Boom. <laughs> and he's like a red mist. <laughs> And here's where we get into the main thing about this film. Is there's two types of violence in Django Unchained. <laughs> there's violence against slaves, which is horrid. Okay. It's the dog eating, it's the whipping, it's all that stuff. That's, mm-hmm. that's terrible and hard to watch. And then, then the there's fun violence. And then there's killing hillbillies, <laughs> which is the best. <laughs> that's when people are like, ah, 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 and exploding with paintballs, or getting shot in the face, <laughs> or um, getting their nuts shot off, well, I, or I exploding. Like, I like Dr. Uh, Schultz's like, taxi driver extendable gun from his uh, arm. You didn't expect that reference, did you? Taxi driver. From a non-movie file, no. Yeah. I have that on glorious collector's edition VHS. My, my, my dad showed me that scene, I think. But yeah. yeah when you were five? Yeah, when I was two. <laughs> um, Danny, this is what you'll be someday. <laughs> Travis Mickle. I went into like a whorehouse, a crack house, and I killed people. Um, this them. movie was really fun. It was really good. I liked it a lot. So we do that, and then Dr. Yeah. Ken Schultz brings Django to town. Mm-hmm. And What, you never seen a nigga on a horse before? Oh, God. We don't say these words usually. We promise. Oh, okay. what's, our, what's our view on the N-word during this review? Um, I think, okay. I don't know, my views on it the same as always. If it's justifiably, like, if we're talking about historical if or we're, something. Well, like, if we're talking about a film... I'm not going to prance around what he said. If he said something, I'm not going to be like, uh, then what are they staring at? Never seen an N word on a horse. That's what, that was a line in the script. I don't care. I don't like saying it because I feel like, because I'm an English major and I like that language. And I, but I feel like me saying it, you know, doesn't affect me, but like some people could find it offensive or whatever. So I don't usually say it. Yeah. And even when I'm texting you or something, I'll be, uh, and we're making jokes or something, I'll say like, I'll say, like, I, I won't write that word, but I'll be like, I'll write literally, like, N- N words. Word. Yeah, I say that. <laughs> Let's get this done, N words. And I'll, I'll say stuff like that. But for the purpose of this. The purpose of the movie, well, it's a like, line in the script. We're going to say That's my it. thing. It's a line in the script. It. Like, they wrote it, and it's a part of the movie. So it's not like I'm paraphrasing. I'm like, oh, yeah, bo- bo- bunch of their kind were in this movie. It's like, no, yeah, I guess it's a kind of ridiculous script. to try to dance yeah, around it. Yeah, fuck right? it. I don't care. I'm not dancing around it. Uh, I have. Jan- he brings Django to the town, and and people are upset. And then the dude goes the to get, sheriff. get the sheriff. <laughs> and Dr. King Schultz brings him to the bar, and he's just like, "Remember, get the sheriff." <laughs> he explains the plan that he wants to mm-hmm. sort of track down those brothers and what he wants Django to do. Right? I don't have those brothers' names. I should have written them down though. Uh, I, I like how fast it moved along. It was, it was Ellis, 
there's another one, and then there was Raja. Sometimes there was Little Raj. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Little Raj, but he's real big. And yeah. uh, the, the the one of the best things in later Tarantino movies is how delicious the food looks. Because it's Strudel and Inglorious Bastards. I know you haven't seen Glorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. The, beer really, Bastards. the beer yes. looked really, the beer looked real good. And hateful latest to stew. And in this movie, it's the fucking beer. That you know, like beer looks shaved delicious. off the head Uses, and like he gets it. rid of the barn, yeah. the foam on beer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so look, how do you fe- how do you feel about this? I guess you just watched this. Today. Yeah, I watched it. You well, watched it. Today. I watched it. Well, I've seen it. I don't think I've yesterday because Friday. Yeah, we're recording this Saturday, the twenty seventh, eighth, twenty seventh, eighth today. 28. I think. Yeah, I watched it yesterday. Tw- no. Yeah, today's 27th. Okay, wait, I guess. Yeah, I watched it yesterday, 26th, Friday. So You watched it yesterday? Yeah. So what was yesterday, your, I what, started my what morning. What was your reaction to the uh, sheriff killing? So. <laughs> you come with a bill, shot, town. Like, why do you want to cause trouble? Coming to Bill, coming to this fine town, coming to Bill Shops Town, and you show your ass, and they get shot. Bang! And he like flies back on the ground. We well, get and shot I, in the gut, and everyone like screams. Well, he gets shot in the gut, and he's like, Aah! he's like, what are you doing to our show? Oh, does he walk over and, and just shoots him in the, head? in the head? Yeah. Everyone starts to run off. Um, yeah, everyone runs off. A woman faints, and then it cuts to the next scene of the, the Marshall. Marshall, yeah. Marshall. Marshall, and he's like, I want guns two, on that house. I want two, 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 men, rifles, two rifles on that house. Two men, two rifles, <laughs> two men, two, <laughs> two rifles on that house. And then it, it cuts back, and there's like a hundred men with guns pointing at and it. And even ladies. ladies and yeah, there's like, too. I noticed that. I was like, there's women who have guns here pointing them. So I was like, okay, that's that. And then there, I didn't know what, what he was going to do from that point. I thought it was a cool character change, though. I was like, oh, it's going to be a big fight. But I was like, nah. They Dr. shoot all the I innocent like, people. I was like, Dr. Schultz is cool. He's like packing up shit. He walks out and he's like, as a man of the law, I can have your a Circuit respect. Court's judge. Yeah, he's judge. like, oh, fuck, I forget his name, but he basically says like, yeah, I'm, I'm a bounty hunter. Yeah. These are the papers for this dude. And he's like, can I reach for my pocket? And the dude's like, you may. And he's like, here you go. And then they get away scot-free. And I was like, oh. He, they do that twice. And they do it again. <laughs> it's like, oh. Well, uh. Well, no, they do it. I do it twice. Yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They well, do it he, twice. I, what, what comes after that? After uh, after that scene, they start going towards the. Uh, they start talking about the uh, plantation, going to get. To, oh yeah, they start making their plans. Because they uh, go to the costume shop, and then Schultz is like, "You can pick what you want." And, and then, then he looks like, like I fucking can pick anything, and he looks like, like Austin Butler. Powers. Yeah, he looks like, looks like Austin Powers. And I was like, "Oh, that's pretty big." And he's riding through it on the horse, and then all the like uh, slaves and stuff are looking at him, and then he's just like, he's like. Uh, was he a free man at that time? Yeah, or was Django he still... Freeman. Yeah, yeah, he was like, he is a free man. Treat me as an offspring of my Well, he gets sad. to Big Daddy's plantation, mm-hmm. and Big Daddy's played by Don Johnson. I don't, I'm sure you don't know who Don mm-hmm. Johnson is. He I don't know who Don Cherry is. He was in, oh my god, Canadianisms. <laughs> he was in um, <laughs> A Boy and His Dog, which is one of those seminal apocalypse, post-apocalypse movies. He's been in other stuff, but I just can't remember it off the top of my head. But he plays Big Daddy. Mm-hmm. And they track the Brittle Brothers. The Brittle Brothers here. That's it. That's it. I was thinking Salty Brothers or something. The Brittle. The, I think they the were called something S because when they meet the them. The Schaefers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were like, yeah, they're well, like, the Brittle they, Brothers. They, they the encounter Schaefers. Big Daddy. Yeah. And they basically the same ploy they use at Calvin Candy where he's like, I want to play. I have 5,000 thoughts of why you should listen to me. Like, planning like he's going to buy one of the, his slaves. Mm-hmm. And he's like, why don't you come on again and get yourself some cool yeah. train? And he's like, take And then he's like, he gets like a, a, a house slave. I know it's a shitty thing to say, but that's what they're called, right? House slaves. The uh, like slave women that were more Virginia? So... What was her name? Well, no, not even that. Like how he said Django's wife was like a house slave. It's like the 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 slave women that like. Well, they aren't even checking Bruce Hill at this point. They're still yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Person. But they called over that black woman to like yeah. give Django a tour of like facilities. That over there is the big house. Yeah, <laughs> big daddy called that because it's big. Yeah, <laughs> and then she's he's like, have you seen have you seen these two people? Have little Rod, people? Have, little Rod, he's not very little. And then he's like, oh, that's right. Ellis and and Roger sometimes yeah. called little Raj. And then they might be using a different name. Oh, you mean like, the Schaefers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, uh, "Where are they?" And then she's like, "He's punishing whatever because she spilled apples. She, she broke some eggs. Yeah, broke some eggs. That's it. I, I have, I have the the, the, the whole everything I, memorized. I have the fucking like advantage of I've seen this film probably <laughs> a dozen times. Or and then. Well, the big guy was Lil Raj, right? I think that was Lil Raj. He had like, he had Bible verses. I love this. Like, st- he's, he's like, to his like, shirt. Where, where are they? And she's like, 
Well, we go to that tree, and you keep going that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes after them, and uh, there's a one of the first flashbacks. I like the flashbacks in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was thinking, yeah. The, they did the same thing. Django shot all this, shot all, or Django. Tarantino shoots all his movies on film. So yeah. they all look really good. And in those flashback scenes, they use a lot of color saturation and okay. film exposure to make them look different. Like, there's that scene. Oh, oh yeah. There's it was that a scene weird with Tony Bruce Dern, thing. like the guy with sunglasses, like yep. the his owner before. Mm-hmm. He's like. Oh yeah, and he got yeah, no yeah, use yeah. for a nigga with sand. Yeah, and you will sell him cheap. And uh, yeah, he's he's like, is that like grit? Is that? Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, okay. but Bruce Stern's been in a lot of other westerns too. He's in, I don't know if he's in spaghetti westerns, but he's in like Hang 'Em High. Mm. He was in The Cowboys with John Wayne. Like he's a big prolific actor. Yeah, and his daughter's Laura Dern. Oh yeah, she's a lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have, I, I recognize her face. I don't, like Dress Fuck isn't one of those big movies for me, so I don't watch it a lot, but. She's in, oh, of, she's in the founder about david lynch films and stuff founder october wild hmm. a, lot of, a lot of good stuff she's good and and bruce Stern's talented as well but yes those flashback scenes are really good and the one where they explain the backstory of the real brothers they're whipping uh django's wife mm-hmm. and he's he's like he's like please please don't please yeah. I love it when you beg, boy. Yeah. That's what he says. And, uh, yeah, so we're getting over, and they're about to whip that lady. They're doing, like, the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah and he, he's patched his shirt with Bible pages. Yeah, I said... I love the costume design in this film. I went back, because it's cause I was so like, what is, good. Yeah, I went back, and I was like, what does he have on his fucking shirt? And they're, like, stapled Bible pages. And oh, I was like, oh, One of the worst... That's nice. Here's the, here's the telling of a bad Western. It's okay. bad sound design, the gunshots don't sound good, Okay. and bad costume design like they just look like they're wearing and both things sounded nicely in this movie yeah like and bad westerns they're just wearing like let's just get western clothes and look get like big shit. pants and this movie boots. looks good as fuck yeah like all the... i like the shots like the riding on riding on horseback and stuff like they all that was live kind of right like that was yeah it's all done no cgi yeah probably probably maybe some scattered in but like the so background and stuff like it wasn't they were there? Yeah, they were all yeah, there. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. It's shot in Alberta, I think. Yeah. It was. It was yeah, it looked really nice. A lot of people, Westerns these days do it, too. A lot of them maple syrup Because they look Westerns. like, yeah. Yeah, because they look like the, like, like yeah. why don't we make like the West? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he tracks down the Brittle Brothers and brutally murders them, which is amazing. I wanted to know. He, like, shoots, he shoots the big fat guy, like, once, and he, like, looks down at his Bible page. And just and falls like, And, like, falls flat back. And then the other dude's, like fumbling with you his gun son of a bitch. and like drops his gun and shit and then Django just whips him like 50 I want to know times. how they did that because there's a there's that scene in Django the original where they're mm-hmm. whipping Maria mm-hmm. but you can tell that whip is fake right like it looks like it's just like strands of like just cloth that they're hitting him with yeah. right? but this movie it looks fucking real like it looks real as hell mm-hmm. I love movies fuck he, he whips that dude and he's just like, y'all want to see something? And he fucking just shoots him <laughs> six times in the chest. And then um, Duck King shows up and they shoot Ellis Brittle. In oh, the, oh yeah. In that the was field. the first time you see the sniper. And he's like, you, oh, I love... Rifle. Okay, let's get on to this. I'm going to forget if I don't. The banter in this movie, I fucking love. Well, the, like, all the dialogue, the dialogue in Tarantino movies is fucking amazing. Well... Like, that makes characters. Like, you can't just have cool characters and not have that shit. Like, banter between characters is what makes good characters. Like, they were looking at the guy on the... Try, he's like, oh yeah, he's over there in the field getting away right now, whatever. And then Dr. Schultz, like, zeroes in on him and he's like, Django, are you sure that's him? And he's like, yeah, positive Django. Are you sure that's him? Yeah, that's him. Are you... No, he's like, are you positive? And he's, he's I, like, I, no. He's like, You're no. Not I meant, yeah, he's like, no. I don't know what positive. Yeah, and then he's like, I don't know what sure. Yeah, I am sure. Yeah, I'm sure. sure what? I am that. I'm sure that's Alice Brittle. And, and then he fucking <laughs> blows him in the back. Well, so, yeah, I don't and know then what that lovely art shot with a fucking flower. The white covered in blood. Covered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they do the same thing they did in the other town, and Doctor King. They do the same thing. Yeah, that, blah, that blah, paper blah. to Big Daddy, and he's fucking. Well, in the first town, he was like. And now you owe me 200, 200 uh, coins. And he, and he was like, what? So in other words, well, Sheriff, you owe me 200 Yeah, he said, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Cool guy. But uh, Big Daddy's pissed. And then we have the bag scene with the bags. Oh, yeah. I like the shifts in this movie. I like, I they take, once, they take the, like, their money out of the tooth. And they fill the tooth with, with dynamite. dynamite. I didn't know what that was at first. I was like, sausage links. And um, they send all their horses down the hill. That's how you introduce that scene. And mm-hmm. did you notice 
They did all that practically. But did you notice some guy fell off his horse and nope. got almost got fucking trampled? Really? When they're coming down the hill. That's the first time I ever noticed it. When I was watching the movie, I'm like, wait, what the fuck just <laughs> happened? And I, and I rewinded and played it. And some guy falls off his horse. I don't know if he's supposed to be shot or something. But he falls off the horse and almost gets trampled. And they didn't they didn't harm any animals in making this film. I saw that at the end. big stamp yeah. at the end. And yeah. stuff. So they had to choreograph everything. But that's really impressive. But then hmm. they have... The like people say the scene's twenty minutes long, but they're exaggerating. Where Jonah, like, where Jonah Hill and Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill and Don Johnson, a bunch of people are talking about fucking with their bags. Yeah, they're wearing like KKK bags on their head, basically. It's yeah. not even cake. It's just it's they're literally just bags. bags. And then one dude's like, I can't even see. My eye holes are all fucked up. And then one of the dudes like, My wife made these bags for you out of her good clear conscience. And then they're like, I'm not saying... I said, I, my wife yeah. made 40 bags. Don't ask me or mine for that. <laughs> he rides away. That was we good. all thought the bags were a good idea. Yeah, we all thought the bags was a good idea. But, but we but just think it could have been, been done, done better. better. So no bags this time. And next time, <laughs> next time we go like, full like, regalia. We do them right. We go full regalia. I, I was laughing at that. I was like, that's such a weird tonal shift. But I was like, it's really fucking funny. So they get all get blown up. And then, uh, He's like, are we keeping the bags on? Yes, you're keeping the bags on. I can't see. You don't need to see. Your horses need to see. It'd be nice to see. It'd be nice to see is all we're saying. <laughs> and then, uh, Does anyone have an extra bag? Django does his first kill. He kills Big Daddy. With the, he's like, With Big, the da- Big Daddy's getting away, Django. I, I know. Big Daddy's getting away. I know. I got him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so fucking cool and that nice art shot where they shoot Big Daddy and he falls off the horse and you don't I see, thought, yeah, you don't. see him fall mm-hmm. and then the horse's neck is just covered, covered in blood. blood and you see like yeah I'm covered in the white yogurt yeah basically. I know the couch is too it's okay this time we're on an actual couch yeah this first time we're on a couch for the one couch podcast <laughs> did it do well like it probably did yeah it yeah. made gangbusters dude but okay they uh, Dr. King Schultz tells them that legend of Siegfried Siegfried and you know, and Broomhilda. Yeah, 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 and yeah. That's a literal, like... Everything about that, yeah. Literally sits him on the hero's quest, and he yeah. even says, like, I'm traveling with a Siegfried. And then we get the shot where they're starting to do bounty hunter things to make money. Was well, that the first time you see, you see like, the bounty hunter guy and... No. Uh, pa- the Pakal and the Pakal gang? Was that the first? Yeah, the Spinny Pakal gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Spin- that was such, like, people won't get this, most people, I thought it was... Like, them up on the hill looking down, it looks like a fucking naturalist painting. It looks like something that's framed like a fucking piece of art. Like, they're just their farm and the horse and the little house up there. Like, it looks like it's a fucking picture frame. Well, it's just that shit. Like, I know I'm going to say it again, but, like, just characters talking like that. Like, when they were up all along the it's, hill. It's all three. It's it's the dialogue is great. Terrence Hughes is great dialogue. The, sh- the shots and cinematography yeah. are fucking great. The costumes are great. Everything's great. Like, the only thing that turns people off this movie is... Historical inaccuracy, which they yeah, can go suck over my it, Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Or it. intense violence. And some people can't handle that, and that's yeah, okay. I, yeah, I do admit that. Some, pe- some people it turns them off. And I would say some stuff I am like... People could argue that, like, you know, it's funny, goofy stuff, most of it, but, like, that dog scene's pretty rough. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. The black guy getting ripped apart by dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Django probably didn't know how to, like, write or read before, right? Oh, yeah. Well, that's it, kind of the thing. It's he was the, like teaching. It's those, it's those like little teaching. things that the, I liked in, a lot. That, yeah. that isn't like Django. I'm now going to teach you how to read. But like it's, you just saw him, and he's like, and he's like, Smitty Puck call, and then Schultz like finished it, and I was like, oh, so that means like Schultz like teaching him on his off. It's almost like you should. Read. It's almost like you could show, not tell him. Yeah, I was like, hey, that's really cool, because like it's just that type of shit, like just. Behind the scenes, you're like, oh, they're actually talking and stuff. Like, they're it, friends. It's the easiest thing to yeah. know, but the hardest thing to actually do is show but not tell. Yeah, and then well, the whole thing he didn't want to shoot the... He had a kid. That was Guy the whole thing. With his son, yes. Yeah, and, you, he, and then uh, he's like, I live in the... This is my world, Django. It's dirty and... I sell corpses for money. Yeah, he's so like... Stop pussy fucking around and shoot him. Yeah, and then he fucking blows up. And then the little kid, he's like... Paul! Paul! And he runs over to his body. <laughs> really good. Holy shit! But uh, yeah, they have a successful winter, Dan. Of, yeah, of, I of hunting and killing. I things. like that. That turns it. It was just Django and Doctor Schultz had a very successful and profitable winter, and then in the I love months, I love that fucking scene where they where they're <laughs> killing guys and they're shooting them whenever then they use they all use guns that aren't from 1858. But I don't fucking care. They're using Henry Peters and stuff, and the Sharps rifle I think is a cartridge gun that's from like the late 
1870s. I don't fucking care. This movie's awesome. <laughs> so they kill those dudes, and they're carting them up to like the trading posts or the like the little sheriff office. It's oh yeah, and, 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 and the like, guy's like, "Who the hell is the? Who's he got there?" He's just like, Smitty "All these people." No, it wasn't Smitty Collins. All these people. He's just oh like, Who yeah. Who the hell is the Walton something gang? And they're like, <laughs> something something. And he's like, "Well, that's fine." Yeah, get on in all the, was get on in all the snowy snow. It was birthday yesterday. Got some cake left over. Pretty good. <laughs> that just cuts. Shit like that is so fucking nice. And they head to... The snowy snow. And they head to Mississippi. Yeah, I have it like... I Do you like, like that the banter. crawl? Do you like that crawl of Mississippi? Yeah, it's all the like slaves chopping away and shit. And yeah. I was like, dang. Or they're That's walking awesome. through the streets. Yeah. yeah, they get the bill- they get the transaction record for Broomhilda. From Broomhilda and, and they find start, out. And they like start hatching line. their master plan. Yeah. Where Schultz is like... You're going to be a black slave. No, he, well, he uh, explains it. He's like, you want to buy a horse. You go up to the farmer and want to buy the horse. Oh, yeah, 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 fuck yeah, off. yeah, You go up to the farmer and you say, I want to buy the farm, but can I buy this horse right now instead? Of course, you're going to get the horse. And then, but he asks Django the first thing. He's just like, well, I say, fuck that farmer. And I steal the horse. <laughs> and then Schultz is like, well, then you're a horse thief and you get fucked. So we have to do it this way. <laughs> you're a horse thief. Yeah, like I even have it written down. I really like the banter and then I have copious amounts of blood. Right, right after it. Just in fight? general. Oh, yes. It's almost like if there's something, if there's weight behind the, the action. You know. I mean, it makes it better. What, right when they go into Candyland. Candyland's the, uh, what was it, third biggest plantation, cotton, fourth. cotton, your fourth biggest cotton plantation factory thing in, in uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. So, like, everyone knows about Candyland, and it's run by Calvin Candy. Calvin Candy. Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. And, uh, he didn't get anything for that. It was a really good role, I thought. Well, I might not know. Like, people are really iffy. Like, I don't think that Leonardo DiCaprio is as good as, as a lot of people yeah. say. But he is fucking good in this yeah. movie. I, I and he tries it. real hard. I liked it, yeah. Um, so they hatched that plan to pose as, like, Schultz is going to say that he wants to buy a Mandingo, which is like, no, they make not, they make black guys fight to the death. Fight basically. to the death with their hands yeah, and then the hammer. Uh, and Django's going to be his valet. Yeah. So he's going to be, like, the guy who helps him buy fighters. Well, yeah. So, so, they was, get, so they get to the Cleopatra Club. Well, that was another thing. Like, uh, Django was like a black slave trader. He even said that he's like he's like a black slave trader is lower than a than the head house nigga. Yeah. Like, which is Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> I really fucking like that. That's what made me think of Afro Samurai too. Is Sam Jackson? Yeah, Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson's, just fucking, whole... Sam Jackson's fucking scary, even if he's a daughtery old, old man. ass man. Yeah. You know he's seventy in real life. Holy shit. Yeah, he's old man. Nice. So they go to the Cleopatra Club, but I yeah. like that point because, like, in the late 1800s, people started to get like obsessed with like Egyptian mysticism and like the culture and stuff. So yeah. that's where the Cleopatra Club's from. Hmm. And I like that. And uh, yeah, we're, we we have that scene where they meet Calvin Candy and fucking the other Django's there. Django one. I know now. <laughs> Franco Nero's there. I should as, watch it again. The guy who runs the who is, owns the other Mandingo, Luigi. <laughs> I remember his name. That was the that was the guy who got murdered's name. Really? Yeah. Didn't he get like his eyes poked well, out? Well, they get in there and they're led up by this uh, by Calvin Candy's lawyer Mo- Mowgli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the Jungle Book, yeah. Mogi or whatever the heck his name is. And Django says that he's basically like a slave because Candy's father paid for his school and stuff. Oh was, yeah, funny. and then Django was yeah. Sounds, I remember. Sounds like yeah, and then he's like, like what? Oh, he's just being cheeky. Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, um, yeah, they get in there, and, of course, they try to do pleasantries with Candy and stuff. But you can hear, like, there's these black two men, men fighting, to the, fighting death, to the death. And then Candy's like, fucking kill him! And he, like, it looked like he, like, poked well, he, his eyes They were fighting, and, uh, what was that guy's name? Big Fred? Candy Spider? I think his name was, like, mm. Samson. No, Samson was one of the guys they were gonna buy. I think it was big something anyway yeah it doesn't matter he breaks the breaks luigi's arm, arm and then, and that then was gouges the was his like, eyeballs out. yeah that's what he did and then he's just like finish it and he drops a hammer and then he fucking bashes his head against the ground and, and he's like well it's over and then candy gives him a bottle of alcohol and he's like yeah tall go. beer yeah tall beer goes to his get room, a pony to lick, lick his, his pole. pole yeah <laughs> good god yes so and then they starts talking to schultz about buying a oh, fighter i don't know what his name was. but he's not impressed with schultz he's impressed with Django. yeah and the thing that gets his attention in that scene and i love the the, the intro to fucking uh, leo DiCaprio's character he's fun as fuck yeah. everyone everyone in this film is really good and they're all yeah. having lots of fun doing this what do you want to say about this scene what do i want to say yeah hmm. 
I don't know. I like. I, I, you gotta I, stop me sometimes because sometimes I just keep talking. I can keep talking. Was was man dingo fighting an actual thing? I have no idea. It, I've never heard about that with slave shit before. Like, look it up. I had never heard. Like, I don't even want to look this up. Man ding man dingo fight man dingo language man dingo fighter. I think isn't like. There's a man dingo film just called man dingo. What does the Huffington Post have to say about this? Uh, it says one expert. Uh, I bet it wasn't a popular thing if this movie is set like a, just a couple years before the Civil War. No. It says like their a slave expert from Huffington Post says. A slave expert from Huffington Post. It says one expert. so oh. Expert in something. I bet he's not employed by the Huffington Post. <laughs> they have him around the office for talking. Just in like case. This. It says that the very notion that Southerners would send their own slaves off to die is logically flawed, which I never thought of that, but it makes sense. Yeah, I feel like if I typed that in, I would have got... It's a good plot device. Yeah. And it seems plot... Like, it doesn't seem plausible in real life, but it seems plausible based on how horrid these fucking characters are. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty fucking bad. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. Of course, Franco Nero played the other Django in the first Django movie we talked about. And then when he goes over to the bar to talk to... The other Django. You, you can hear the Django theme twinkling. <laughs> and like a little tinny piano in the background. You can barely hear it. But it's playing. <laughs> oh, I, I said uh, Spec. Spec Brothers. That was the two guys in the beginning who were carting around Django. James Renard. I don't know how to say his name. He plays both the Spec Brother that gets shot in the head by Schultz. And he plays Butch. Oh. And he plays Butch. Calvin Candy's little... Like, dude, with the shotgun. Oh, the oh, yeah, 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 with the whole sawed off. I thought he looked the same. Yeah. Dr. King Schultz basically says, like, I have $12,000 to buy. Yeah, you know, by top of the line prices. To buy Eskimo Joe. Eskimo Joe. Yeah. But they don't know about Eskimo Joe then. No, like, they, they didn't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he basically says, yo, come on down with us. And they start the ride Falling to, off to Candyland. Candyland. And that's the beginning of the film. Yeah. The beginning of the film takes an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. It takes about lots half of the lots movie of to get through the beginning of the, for the film. First time. And of course, Calvin's carriage is pulled by this gigantic, huge, beautiful Clydesdale, and everyone else has to ride like in like shitty little yeah. horses behind him. But uh, what do you feel about the the the, 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 the like the convoy the, the, scene? It, well, like that first time when they actually get the candy land, like even though Django's no, going up to the candy land, going up to it, yeah. like. Even, like, you're talking about when Django and them are riding on the horses yeah, and stuff going there. Even, like, even if Django's with them, all the white people are like, what the fuck's he doing here? And then the one of Calvin Candy's men says something to him. Was it Walton Goggins? The, the like, fat guy and then Django pulls oh, he him says off the horse like, and, like, breaks his collarbone. Yeah, pulls him off the horse. He I, says I something. Think, I think you'll, I think I was reading this. I think Yul Brenner did that in Magnificent Seven. Like, a lot of stuff in this film is, here's the thing with Tarantino, like, is he, he, he borrows from a lot of movies, mm-hmm. but he does it in a way where it makes you think it's, like, really original and fits in. Like, it's not, like, like a reference yeah, yeah, that yeah. really sticks out. He does that really well. But yeah, and he immediately antagonizes Walton Goggins, which is the... Pulls him off his horse, no, breaks his collar. Yeah, well, he does that to that guy. But he immediately antagonizes Walton Goggins, which is, like, the main dude who is going to cut his nuts off. Oh, oh, fuck. I hated how that guy looked. He looked like such a fucking prick. Yeah, Walton well, Goggins... Holy great. shit, he looked like such an asshole. Walton well, Goggins is in the... I don't have anything written about that, I don't think, but he looked like such well, a Walton Goggins is also in the hateful eight. He just looks like such a fucking shit eater. dickhead. Yeah. He's good at that. They start going down and they're questioning why Django's there and stuff. Yeah. And then you, you get introduced to Spitty, the the slave that looks at Django and he's just like, what are you looking oh, at? Oh, yeah. And he spits and he's just like, nothing. And then Django immediately is just like... He goes like off the fucking deep end. Well, he's like, I don't remember what he says, but he's just like, fuck all of you slaves, you pieces of shit. He's like, I, I, I may look like you, but I'm... And then Schultz is like, may I have a second to talk to my... my Stop friend. antagonizing these poor devils. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, what the fuck? But I gotta sell my character, you asshole. This is what you told me to do. He's like, oh, good God. And he, and he tells Django at that point that he's found out that Broomhilda is at the... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, there's the German-speaking slave, yeah. Yep, yeah. and he gets into the carriage and they go back and all this way... Uh, Calvin Kennedy's really impressed with Django. Yeah, he's looking like a nice But man. they get to the woodman. Oh, yeah. How'd you feel about the woodman, oh, man? Oh, Lord. Yeah, so this scene opens up, and it's like, 
two dogs bark like you know, it's like two two or three dogs like ferociously snapping their jaws. I want to say something before. What What's I, up? One of my favorite lines from that fucking carriage ride is, "I don't want to die in Chickasaw County, Mississippi, USA," <laughs> and then he dies there. <laughs> but yeah, the woodman. Um yeah, scene opens up. It's like two or three dogs like snapping their jaws up in a tree. And it's like a let's little... pick like different cuts of like yeah. all the woodmen. Yeah, and one of them's a lot of well, people. Well, one of them's a one, one of them's Zoe Bell, who's in Death Proof, and she's in some other movies. She yeah. does. She did voices for Fallout New Vegas. She's a stunt woman in Iron Man Three. I and, recognize and the new Thor Three for Kate Yeah, she's a, she's a really she's been in a lot of times. They're movies. all like angry wood woodcutters, wood cutting cut. trees and shit. Except for Zoe Bell. And then it... I think like there's a lot of big actors amongst them. Amongst just that hidden. group. Because yeah. I know James Parks is in there. And James Parks is in Hateful Eight. He is... I don't know if he's not on the cover. He's not one of the Hateful Eight. You know the three Australian guys at the end? From what? At the end when Django gets sent off the... Was one of those Quentin Tarantino? Yes. Sick. Because I I didn't know if that was him, but I wrote it down in my notes. Quentin Tarantino blows up. He was the one that got hit by the dynamite? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the woodman, and then we get introduced the thing that turns people off most of this yeah, movie. Yeah, I could see is they why... feed a fucking guy to dogs. Yeah, slave the dogs, and they like, yeah, the dogs are barking at a slave that's in the tree, and well, then well, they first on him. Well, he says, "Who will reimburse me the two hundred dollars?" Yeah, and then Schultz is like, "I'll me... reimburse you." And then and like, like, "No, he won't. Don't fucking do that." Yeah, and then like, they're like, "Okay." <laughs> but he's like, "We well, don't mind what I do with my property." No, he's like. Let Mosh and the bitches have him. And then they, send they the slowly and release the dogs And then out. Calvin's like, your master looks, uh, your, your boss looks pretty green for Calvin's something who wants to get him a bingo fire. Him. And he's just like, nah, he just ain't used to, he ain't around, he ain't used to seeing, seeing, someone, and... seeing someone get eaten by a dog. Yeah. So. Like, oh. I'm used to it. Oh, what did he say? Fuck, I really Yeah, like, <laughs> that scene was really fucking bad. Those dogs, like, ripped him apart. I'm just a little more used to Americans than he is. Yeah. That's fucked up. I was like, oh, That's good, good God. Yeah, that scene, I, I could see why people got a little turned off by that scene. Then they get to Candyland. They get to Candyland, it's all happy and joyful. And you get introduced to fucking Sam Jackson, who plays he was like, Steven. Is he the head house? Uh... He's the house nigga. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. And he's, like, doing taxes and shit, and he's, like, making jokes with everyone. But he comes out, and he's like, why is he on a horse? What? And he's yeah. like, that's a free man. And he's like, he starts, like, he's basically just a white guy. Well, he's basically, Calvin's trying to say that he basically did treat him like a white person. Yeah. And he wants Schultz's wedding. And, he yeah. said, and Sam Jackson's like, you're going to have to burn all the sheets and stuff after in the room. He's laughing, oh, fuck. Like, stuff like that. Like, it sells the world, but yeah. it's still, like, fucked up. Shit like that, though. Oh, I, I I noticed the... This is the first time I really noticed the fucking weird interactions between him and his sister, Laura Lee. Oh, I thought there was something weird from... They're all... They're always kissing each other. Yeah, I know. No, right when he introduced that... I haven't seen this movie. Where is my yeah. beautiful sister? Right when he introduced that, I was like, oh, this is going to be weird, isn't it? And then she comes up and he, like, kisses him, and I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I didn't do weird. anything with that. It's just... It's oh. just it's just color for the universe. Yeah, it was just weird. It's just nice little background stuff, Dan. Yeah. And then uh, Calvin wants Steven to get uh, Broomhilda, but she's in the hot box. And they pull her out of the hot box. The hot box is like twenty minutes. So yeah. Broomhilda's in the hot box. Hot box is like a because she tried to it run away. It looks fucking hell. It looks like you cost most horrid shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's this hot steel box that is put built in the ground. In. Yeah. And they dump water on her, and Django's yeah. and got like his hand steams. on her gun. And it, oh, it's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, it's really and tough to see. They, they throw her in a fucking wheelbarrow and yeah, just wheel they her away. <laughs> they bring. That, they don't go to dinner straight away, do they? They bring Broomhilda to Schultz's room first to talk German. And introduce you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they bring... Because then the dinner uh, scene is when Sam Jackson yes, was like, oh, two and nervous know each other. To Schultz's room. Yeah. And he's really rude to Laura Lee, which is nice. And they have a little conversation. He says, like, you know, you're so beautiful. Friend and wants to meet you. My friend wants to meet a you. A dramatic friend. And then they use a stock door opening sound, and Jay goes there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, she goes unconscious. Draw, draws a fucking... That's really nice scene. Faint. I was like, oh. But, um... There's Pooh. Moving about. Pooh! There's a third host. We should put her on the art. <laughs> Poo! Yeah. Yeah. So, that was a scene. That was a scene. Yeah? Yeah, and they go to dinner. Well, when they go to dinner is when <laughs> the plan starts. 
falling through real quick. I like a lot of the color in this though, because of color of evening added stuff like yeah. the scene with like like Encora Qui or whatever the fuck that song is that lady singing in Italian <laughs> just like setting the table and stuff yeah, yeah. that's really neat a lot of stuff well and the dinner is when shit starts going south well it goes good at the beginning and then and then, and then Sam but, but I love like, I love Sam Jackson because he goes in and out of the scene but when he's out of the scene he changes his cadence and he doesn't limp as much he's just like yeah 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 and he's just like you know what do this do this this and he goes in there he's just like whoa massa yeah, uh, like let's do this, and he just totally plays it up to Calvin and the rest of them. Which yeah, is interesting. Yeah, because that scene is when Sam Jackson is realizing like uh, Django knows or Brunhilde well, knows Django. They keep looking at each other, and, looking at each other. And, stuff. and then and well, he pulls uh, eventually. They do a f- they have a few interactions which are neat, but they yeah. pulls Calvin into the city, and he says, "Those two motherfuckers in here buy no man dingoes." <laughs> He says like, well, they came here and they and they and they tried to they they tried to buy him. They said they, they paid me twelve thousand dollars. He's and like, have you got the money? He's like, no, then you ain't bought nothing. Yeah, yeah. He's like, do you have any money? No, they'll give it to me in five minutes. Then they ain't bought nothing yet. Well, he says like, why why would they do this? And he says, you wouldn't pay no, never mind the three hundred dollars. Yeah, that's really smart. And Sam Jackson just sees right through it. Yeah. And then and they, and they, and they come back angry. into this the, to the dinner and things change. It is no longer fun. He busts out old Ben's skull and like <laughs> breaks up. Yeah, old old Ben was his. And he, and he pulls out some uh, delicious racist science. And and he's like, like these, these three, three dimples, dimples are right right on the spot for right critical up. thinking or something. No, he, he, the three dimples on old Ben's skull is like submissiveness yeah, and stuff like that. Like... Some good old racist science. And then he's like, he's like a white man's skull don't have that. And he, and he like grabs Brew Hill and he's like, if I bust this fucking girl's head open, she's gonna have the same dimples and the same. Well, he says like but... Django. He says like Django. How about however how cool you think you are? Yeah. Like if I did this, if I knocked your head open, there'd be the same three dimples right in that same <laughs> place. Oh. Can't be. You know what happens in this scene? And I know for a fact. Does know, he cut himself? You know that scene where he smashes smashes his hand on the table? And Does he? Cuts? He fucking cuts himself. I thought himself. so because that. He Look. cuts himself, and then remember how he rubs all the blood on her yeah. face? That's real. Yeah. That's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, that looked weird to me. Like, I think maybe Cassie told me about it, but, like, when that happened, I was like, that looks like it hurt. And then, like, it was bleeding pretty profusely, and I was like, did he actually cut himself? Yep, he and then he was, like, clenching his hand. I was like, oh, he's doing it really good. And he good. was picking glass. Out yeah, of and, I, and I was like, oh, that was real. he's doing it really good. And then he, like, wiped it on Broomhilda's face, and she, like, screamed, and I was like, that was probably... Sam Jackson, I think, loses his cool a little bit in the background, too. He, like, kind of looks at it like this, and then he's, like, <laughs> he's kind of like, what the what fuck? What the fuck's going on? <laughs> and he looks over, but, um, yeah, that's all real, dude. <laughs> that was a good scene. A really good fucking good scene. Yeah, uh, that, that's when the plan starts to fuck up. Well, uh, well, well he says... Well, they sort of get better they come back from it because well, he like, says oh, like the price for Broomhilda is twelve thousand yeah, dollars and then he's like okay there move my bill phone from my pocket yeah he's like he's like okay he pays the twelve thousand dollars no he gives him a lot of money and he yeah, has yeah. like forty grand oh, yeah. and then he just pick out twelve grand he's like that's twelve there and he gives yep. him back his fucking wallet and then uh they they do that thing and it's like oh they're gonna get out scot free you know they're not gonna fucking do scot free well Schultz is sitting there in in the in the, in study. the, in the parlor and where, he turns around and he's like talking a, a well, he's sitting there and he's getting all these flashes yeah of that dog guy getting eat, D'Artagnan getting eaten by fucking dogs and he ta- oh yeah because he walked to the parlor and then he's like he was talking to him about the three musketeers and he's like. You're a man. Well, I knew what he was like. Did you catch that he was speaking French too to piss him off? Yes. Yeah, like <laughs> that was a really funny scene. Well, he says, um, I forget the guy's name who wrote Three Musketeers. Basically, says like you must be a big fan. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. like, he's like, I don't think he'd like what you did. He's just like, oh, soft hearted French. He's, he's like, like, oh, du- Duplan. I think that was his name. Duplan was black. Yeah, he's like, he's like black. And he's like, oh. And then yeah. he signs the papers, and then everything gets fucked up. Everything looks he's like, like let's okay. go, and he's yeah. like, he's wait like, a minute, in that's... the south, in the south, the deal is not finished till we shake hands. We can trade that money, but it doesn't mean fuck all here. And he's like, they're standing there, and he's like, you want me to shake your hand? Yes, shake your hand over there. Yes, I want you to come here and shake my hand. Oh, if, if, if it really insist, means, if you insist, and then he taxi <laughs> drivers, boom. taxi drivers blows him, and then he's like. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. resist. And, and then, then he the gets shot, his shotgun and he launches him in the sky. <laughs> yeah, oh. that, was a, that was a good exchange. That was a good death for Schultz. And then 
Am I wrong because I want to get it on till I die? Am I wrong because I want to get it on till I die? And they fucking kill okay. everyone. But... I like Broomhilda, but she didn't do fuck all. I was expecting her to maybe like shoot someone and do something. She just screamed. Yeah, Maria in the other movie shoots a couple dudes. Yeah, like every, but every scene with Broomhilda, she was like, oh, We got to talk about this fight scene, Dan. Yeah, I know. Well, this okay. screaming Mowgli, whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> he kills. He's like, oh my god, I was going crazy. Oh, and he yeah. gets shot. He's just like, ah, like writhing on the ground. Someone else shoots him again in the leg. And he's like, my leg. And then That's someone else shoots him in the yeah. ass. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? But yeah, but like guys keep coming out and they keep getting like obliterated because <laughs> they're Django. all standing perfectly in the doorway. They're all standing exactly in the doorway. Well, Django shoots their through guns. a guy and yeah. hit another guy. <laughs> Fuck. He kills probably how many people? Like. Oh, dozens. Yeah. This, I said blood eruptions, and the song that's playing is Unchained. That's what the song is called. Uh, it's over. Like from what I remember, I thought it was longer, but it's over relatively quick. Yeah, a- ending fight at plantation is fantastic. Well, and then everyone's just shooting at the hallway. The yeah, everyone's like, just. And, he's and not, then they're Steven's not like, him. he's like, ceasefire, ceasefire, question, goddamn it! And then everyone <laughs> stops. And he said, and he's like, you know, Mal Goggins got his pistol to Broomhilda Sanders. You got ten. And he says we're gonna shoot yeah. him, and he says that ain't no promise. That ain't no threat, horse boy. That's a promise. So we were, we're talking about the plantation fight. Things. Um, it was a plantation, right? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, were picking cotton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's over relatively quick, and... Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fast. But that well, was the well, thing, like... Well, well, uh, at the end, you know, Stephen makes that promise that's like, yo, we're not gonna shoot her if you come out. And he says, how do I know that? He's just like, honest engine, Django. We ain't gonna do it. <laughs> They're fucking well the dialogue, but, uh... Well, like, that's the thing. It was over real quick. But there was no downtime at all. It was just <laughs> minute <laughs> one. Shoot, 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 shoot. Picks up a gun off a dead guy. Shoot, 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 shoot. Throws like an away. Shoot, 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 shoot. There was no downtime. So he gets captured, part. and the the like the fucking like smash cut from that scene is Django is fucking Jamie Foxx hanging from scene with his nuts hanging yeah, out and, and his dick just yeah. there. And Samuel Jackson's talking about like they're talking about how they should kill Django. And everyone's like, Wait. Walton Goggins comes in to cut his fucking nuts yeah, off. Yeah. And Wal and Walton Goggins actually just grabs his cock. Like in real life, just like holds on to his cock and is going to cut his balls off. And, and Steven's like a red like, hot knife. And then Miss Laura changed her mind, doesn't want him snipped. And yeah. he's just like, like no oh, waste no time in telling me. And then he like lazily walks out of there, like half cocked sideways. Yeah. And then that that fucking scene with with Sam Jackson and Jamie Foxx, where, where Jamie Foxx can't talk, and Sam Jackson's just like... They're trying to figure out how to kill you. A nor- What do you say? A normal man, when you cut off his nuts, dad bleeds out in about seven minutes, let's say. And it's like, they're talking about hanging him and, like, shooting so him about shit. feeding him to Marsha the yeah. Marsh and, and, and he's like... But I, he, kept, he kept saying... The, the niggas we sell to quit Dick, Dickie Mining Company oh, gets yeah. it worse than that. And yeah. then lo and behold, Laura Lee gets the idea that we should sell them to the quit Dickie Mining Company. Because it's just 24-7. And he, and he explains to them, like, when you get there, they're going to take away your name and give you, give a, number, you a number. And a sludge hammer. And you're, you're going to make big, big rocks, rocks and, in a little rock. <laughs> rocks, yeah. And, and then they're going to work you. Every day, all day, every day. Oh, you Until keep... your back gives out. They're going to hit you on the head. And three of the nigga. Yeah. And that'll be the end of you, Django. And yep. that's just the end. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's and then it, it uh, what is it? Just jump cut straight to him going around in the little cart? Yep. And he, can, he, he convinces, he convinces the three, with his silver tongue. The three dumbest Australian men in the world. <laughs> to, to go just, back and, like. To go back and fight the Smitty Bacall gang. So yeah. Well. He does it cleverly, too, where he, he only says a few things. And then they go question the guys in the cage. And, and they're like. You know, who's this guy? Is he, is he really a slave? And they're yeah. like, he came yesterday. They, they say, everything that checks out, he came yesterday. Yeah. He's a white man. He's, about he's on the horse, came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, he he's like, he's like, I need a gun if we're going down there. And then the hillbilly gives him a gun. And well, he, and well like, the guy's like, <laughs> well, well, Michael Parks is like, well, you got a rifle in there. Just yeah. Get your, he's like, oh, all right. Now, don't drop the gun. It's got the sights. I the sights on And they're perfect. And he's just like, that's good to know. Boom, boom, boom shoots, shoots him and them both. Him and, and then Parks. the dude, and then Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino holding a stick. A well, he box. lets the sticks go, and yeah. he's gonna. Qu- he starts to quick draw, and Django shoots the fucking dynamite and, and blows, blows him the fuck up, and he's nothing. And then the slaves in the cage look at it, and they're like, oh. And then Django like gets on the horse, rides off back to the plantation, and one of the slaves well, first like, he gets the, the fucking he gets the fucking. Uh, 
respect of Spitty. Yeah. The guy he was he was railing when they were getting there. And, and he like just smiles. Like a smile. <laughs> he rides off. <laughs> and he goes to do the yeah. Woodman Massacre. Where he kills oh, all the fucking Woodman. I like that a lot. That scene was complete fucking camp. He gets to the top of the stairs in the plantation after it was Candy's funeral, right? Well, you kill. Well, I just like that scene because a lot of the, a lot of those characters have a lot of flavor because yeah. they don't say like basically anything, but they're really fun to kill because they're really noticeable. <laughs> and he comes in and he says he says D'Artagnan motherfucker like the guy they fed the dumb <laughs> and just shoots all of them. But I love how he's it's like really done really well how they're shooting all the guys and and they're they're where they were sitting and then just there's this like half a second shot. Of like nothing happening, the guy standing out of the tub and he shoots his nuts off, yeah. and then he just keeps killing everyone. <laughs> well, like, I'm just talking about when he gets back to the plantation and he stands at the top of the stairs waiting, or he stands like in the back corner. By the and by, yeah, and he's like, "I'll, I'll send you to the by and by." He says you're gonna be seeing Captain the by and by, by sooner by than by. you thought. And then he proceeds to shoot. Oh fuck! I love. There's some good quotes in that scene. Two of my favorites. He shoots uh, everyone, and then he's like... Well, he, he shoots one guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's like... Uh, uh, he, that, he, well, one guy was going to cut his nuts off. Your hand on my... And shoots him, and in, shoots him in the dick. He says, the Django, you black son of a bitch. And, and he says, the D.S. Simon. The D.S. Simon. He'll believe... It kills him. That was a really good line. And then, I don't know if it's better or the same amount. He says, goodbye wife. to Miss Laura. Yeah, say goodbye to Miss Laura. What? Say goodbye to her. Goodbye, Miss Laura. And he shoots her, and she, like... He shoots her sideways, but she, she flies She rockets backwards. back into the other room. <laughs> so funny. And those slaves didn't give a fuck. Yeah, they started running. Yeah. And then all Sam, Sam Jackson Jackson's like... Left, and he's like, Karen, I count Karen. shit six shots, nigga. I count two, two guns, guns, nigga. And, and he's like, he's like, you said you've seen... Sla- you've been well, in here Well, for at him. this point, Sam Jackson, like, lets his cane fall. And yeah, he stands he, he, up straight, and he's fine. Yeah, he's perfectly fine, and yeah. he's just like, you've seen a lot of... You seen niggas die a lot of ways. Seven or eight. Di- or he's never like, mentioned kneecap and shoots boom, boom. He's like, uh, oh, oh, is there some freak out? Uh, and then everything that Calvin came out of Calvin Kennedy's mouth is horse shit, except for one thing. I am that one nigga. <laughs> there were so many good fucking quotes in that scene. You can't run far enough, Django. And, and then he knows. lights the dynamite, and it's, you can hear Sam. You can't kill Candyland. Candyland will be here forever. And then if explode in like a miraculous explosion plugs her ears what's her name i forget Bert, Br- Br- Brumhilda. Brumhilda. Brumhilda plugs her ears they get on the horse and he stands back with and this ending takes this ending takes forever they pay this yeah. cool song called trinity and he just like prances his horse around yeah and i saw that I and like, they do this the flashback of schultz and he's just like you know what they're gonna call you the fastest, the fastest gun in yeah, the south yeah 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 oh and then the movie ends. <laughs> i sat through the credits too yeah i did too yeah. It's good as heck. So, it's a good do you want to know some time. other things about uh, what came after Django? The Hateful Eight, which I have right here, so, start, started out as a Django story. Oh, did it? And then they like ad- did they adapt it into like something yeah, of their own? Yeah, Tarantino was writing about uh, as like he wasn't gonna make another movie about yeah. it, but he was writing a story where Django was like hiding people up in the mountains with Broomhilda or something. So and that's he how they do like a. That's how Sam sequel. Jackson's character starts in this movie. He's like a dude who's a bounce hunter he's running away from people hiding in the mountains that's supposed to be Django but it, it turned into a different thing there's also an official sequel to Django and you know what it is mm. it's a comic book it were, Django teams up with Zorro and I read it wait what Django teams up with an old Zorro and it's fucking great Dynamite Django Django Zorro volume 1 what the fuck I don't think that's right I don't think it's called Dynamite Django oh I think that was just the producer yeah the official sequel to Django Unchained in the first ever comic book sequel, Dawn of Tarantino. I think it's just called Django Zorro. Django Zorro, yeah. It's fucking great. I got that for Ian for Christmas like, last God. year or something. And I read all of it before I gave it to him. It's really good. Yeah. I don't know. I should... I want to watch your, like... What's your verdict on fucking uh, Django Unchained? Dan? It's really fucking how do you, good. How do you feel of it as a spiritual sequel to Django 1966? I mean, it changed a lot of stuff. It did a lot more stuff about the actual filming. I don't know. It was just better. Like, I like the 1966 well, yeah. version, but... They're both good movies, but Django Unchained is better. It's better, yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to compare them, but yeah, I like both of them, but Django Unchained he's, was... He's handling duck use yeah. right now. Is that like... That's James Coburn. Is it supposed to be a comical name, or is it just like... James Coburn? Like, duck you sucker. Duck you sucker? Or is yeah. it just like duck, like... 
It's Ducky Sucker. Actually? Yeah. Huh. I think James Coburn says Ducky Sucker in that movie. Nice. I enjoyed Django quite a bit. Do you want to watch the, the stack of fine spaghetti westerns and the stack of Tarantino things? I want to watch n- this one. Navajo Joe? That's yeah. probably the worst one. I, I want to watch that one. It looks funny. Maybe the worst one I have is Kioma, but... Kiyoma was up there on the top. Yeah, but uh, Kiyoma's... People like yeah, Kiyoma, but Kiyoma's Kiyoma's soundtrack you... fucking sucks. Yeah? Like, if you're a fucking... There's player, lots of rock... I don't know what the fuck's what going on. <laughs> it's an old press company. I have no fucking clue. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like... Uh, from Recess. No, it sounds like Juma- yeah, Have you ever seen Jumanji, the original Jumanji? Yeah. It sounds like what's happened in the factory of the first Jumanji movie with all the bells and whistles and shit. Ugh. Apparently the new Jumanji movie did really well. Apparently it wasn't half bad either. Is it still on? Do you know, do you know what? The, did I tell you this piece of trivia? Sam, or not Sam Jackson. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's yeah. character in Jumanji is named after Dan Harmon's dungeon master. The guy in Harmontown, Spencer Crittenden. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like... Verdict on Django and Django. Okay, I thought we were talking about Jumanji now. Wow, Go for your... another two hours talking about Jumanji 1, Jumanji 2. What's your verdict on Django and Django, Dan? Quality? So, 10 out of 10? Wood bang? Yeah, it was really quality. Cassie already watched it, or I would have watched it with her, but I didn't have enough time. I had to, like, fit it into my... Because I, I woke up Friday morning, my class was at 1, movie's, like, three hours long. I woke up at, like, 8.30... And I watched the movie at like nine and then immediately walked to class. And what I was a way like, to start your day. Yeah, I felt real weird. I was like, well, that was the first thing that I witnessed today. Uh, I bet that colored the rest of your day. Yeah, made me weird. Yeah. Really good movie. How do you feel? I don't know about themes. Do you think they carry them out well? Race and violence? I think the, re- the rate, like, obviously it's not white people and Mexican people, it's black people. It was more like timely though. Like people from our generation and stuff, when you think of like, slaves and stuff you're not like mexican yeah they weren't white people they weren't really making like i bet they were making like they were making stuff like in the 60s stuff they're making like in the heat of the night and stuff like that yeah. they weren't really dealing with like like actual yeah. slavery yeah. yeah no i thought it was good it, it improved on i don't think it like did anything worse <laughs> i think it improved on everything yeah really yeah. good sequel why well, i like both these movies i picked yeah. them and i wanted you to watch them so yeah, we've done that. I watched them both. I hope you all there in, in, in YouTube land enjoyed them too. <laughs> watched them along with us. Yeah. Like well, Mystery I we'll, Science I we'll Theater. That. I think we'll do that too as we post our videos and stuff. Because we're talking right now like not having posted the first one. We're posting it tonight. Yeah. But like I think that'd be a fun thing for people to like email the email account, which is one couch podcast with two O's at gmail.com and stuff like that. Just tell us what you think and stuff like that we'll yeah. learn before we come in. Maybe we'll, well, we will give people's comments and stuff when we're talking about the movies or something as we grow as yeah. people. But, uh, yeah, this has been this, this episode two. Episode two yeah. of One Couch Podcast, Django and Django. We'll be back in a second with, with Danny's picks. No, my pick. Oh, God. Um, What's your pick, Dan? Um, Do you have it? Do you have one? I've been thinking about one. You have a PS3, right? Yeah. Are you picking a game? I don't know. I want to pick a game. I like games. I don't know. Do you want to give it a little time? I mean, you can look around and see. That's pause it. Let's pause and have you think about it. Okay. We'll pause. We don't have. Do we have to tell? Do we have to tell them for the next episode? Yeah, we do. Secret? The boys gonna pause. You're gonna pick. Okay. So I'm gonna cover this up. Okie dokie. Are we recording now? Yeah. Yeah, we're good again. Okay. So, what have you picked for the episode, Dan? M- my pick took started? a whole one minute real time to figure out. So cause... for next week, for the next episode. If you want to, to, to participate in the non-discussion, what would you pick, Dan? What am I going to okay. watch? Okay, I started by looking at games. I was looking at Infamous, maybe do, like, I like Infamous 1. Infamous one's probably one of my favorite but What games. are we doing, Dan? We're doing uh, F for Samurai. Is it, and a, is it a film? It's a little TV series, if I remember, six episodes there. Can you do a quick Googling just to make sure? Yeah, let me, it, it's, there's a movie as well, but it's it's not long. It's not like a long thing. I'm watching. Those. It's not like a 32 episode anime. Oh, so. Get we... ready, get get ready, get ready though one time, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure one time. Oh god. That's a thing we're going to be fucking down for, because I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So just do this at Google and see, what, see what I need to watch and stuff. Yeah, 2007. Is it a movie? Is it just the movie? There's, no, there's this, and then there's a movie called Afro Samurai Resurrection. So we're just watching the series. 
Yeah, we're going to watch yeah, uh, five episodes, okay, yeah, and they're, I think, 45 minutes oh, a piece or something. No, they're not bad at all. Is it nice all. and violent? It's so fucking Should I watch the dub or the sub? Uh, it's only, it's it's an American made. Oh, okay, well, I'll yeah. watch that then. So yeah, it's and then there's a movie we're gonna watch the movie as well. It's called Afro Samurai Resurrection. What's gonna be the title of the third episode? One Couch Episode Three. One Couch Episode Three. Afro Fun Times. Sounds alright to me. Right, Cassie fun. can draw me with a big afro. And me with a me samurai, with a samurai sword. sword. Right. Ooh, okay. Cassie, note when you listen to this. Uh, draw me with a teddy bear head. I. I guess I'll get that after I watch the uh, film. Anyway, this has been the second episode of One Couch Podcast. Django and Django. I hope you guys are liking it. I'm yeah. liking doing it. Like yeah, I'm having fun. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Any parting words, Dan? Thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Bye!